All right, and we are recording. Hi, uh, hello to anyone who could be watching this. You're watching a game that was arranged through the Gauntlet, which is a community on the internet that gets together and plays tabletop role-playing games online. It's really cool. Check out gauntlet-rpg.com for like the nexus of all things related to uh, what the Gauntlet does in terms of tabletop indie role-playing games. Um, there's blogs, there's forums, there's the monthly zine that the Gauntlet puts out called Codex, which usually contains, you know, uh, supplements to existing games or original games um, in itself. Um, there's also the extensive podcasting um, network with all sorts of stuff ranging from, you know, discussions to different types of indie games, PBTA games, even some actual play. Um, but the what I consider probably the most important part of the Gauntlet is the Hangouts calendar to which all these darn games are arranged. There's like a uh, hundred plus uh, each month, check them out. Um, it's really cool way to play um, lots of different games, including this one, um, which is uh, Blades in the Dark, um, uh, which is, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a game um, designed by John Harper. Um, it is a game of thieves, rogues, scoundrels, trying to make it on top in an industrial fantasy city. Well, usually. But uh, for this, uh, we are using uh, a playset by Sean Nittner. Um, it is the Vigilantes playset, which casts our colorful uh, cast. Uh, oops. <laughs> Use the same word twice in two word succession. Uh, cast of characters from, you know, from ha scrounging over, to uh, over each other to trying to like protect those who need to be protected, who could, who, who could use with, some, with protection in this dangerous city. Um, our cast of characters are crime fighters, uh, so to say. And, you know, they're here to make sure that the citizens of Duskwall, or their community, are, you know, living their lives um, free of, you know, undue pain. Uh, pain, mostly. Um, most, of, most of pain in Duskwall is kind of undue because Duskwall kind of sucks as a place uh categorically um okay so uh what i'm gonna do is um ask everyone to like introduce themselves just themselves we'll save characters for later because it's been a while um uh, for those who might be watching this yes this is um for those who are watching this in succession to the other vigilante uh, videos it has been two months has it only been two months it <laughs> I say two months, but uh, those were some two damn long months. But it's been two months since we last played together. So uh, you'll, if you'll notice, things are suddenly really sunny where I am uh, compared to last time. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to need some time to like refresh ourselves with the characters. So for now, I'll ask everyone to introduce them, just themselves, um, you know, the name, pronouns, and if there's anything they want to shout out, like, you know, where... Yeah, people can find you on the internet if you're in, in, involved with something or if there's just anything you want to shout out. And if not, that's perfectly fine as well because uh, I myself have nothing to shout out at the moment. Actually, I do. I just thought of something. Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Leandro. I should have introduced myself. I uh, use him pronouns. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at LPondoc. That's L-P-O-N-D-O-C. Uh, the main thing I have to shout out is that this week I'm doing a stream with the, with the Off the Table. We're continuing our good non our good society uh actual play uh with masks uh masquerades and minuets it's really fun uh i'll put a link down below and for any other plug that folks make i'll put a link down below um but yeah check out uh off under twitch at uh, twitch.tv uh find off the table ah uh, we just finished a mask ball which involved two uh love triangles that only involve two people two of them oh god <laughs> so much um so watch out for that so um i'm gonna go by the order of the character sheets in roll 20 from top to bottom so i'm sorry will you're back in that position where you're first always at least for these intros so uh will would you kind of introduce yourself hi my name is will my pronouns are he him and um i think that's about it for my pro for my introduction <laughs> i should say that will is kind of like uh and ninety percent the reason why this entire run <laughs> has. Oh yeah, uh, I, re I really wanted to play pulp uh, comic book Watchmen flavored uh, Blades in the Dark, and Leandro obliged happily. <laughs> it's a good flavor. It's a really fun flavor. Um, up next, uh, Sabine, would you kindly introduce yourself? Oh yeah, hi, my name is Sabine. I use uh, any pronouns. I uh, also am on Twitter uh, and occasionally post pictures of weird plants or and or animals which are probably not really weird but 
Well, who cares? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as uh, Sabine V5. Yeah, and that's me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitter is a good follow. Yeah, if you want. Like, yeah, lots of really nice nature shots uh, for sure. And uh, sometimes we get, you know, some leading questions about about those nature shots, which is always really nice. Yeah, I should do that more. I know I'm playing too much. Uh, yeah, that's that's a, that's, a, that's a familiar dilemma. Um, up next, Jim, would you kind of introduce yourself? Hey, hello, everybody. I'm Jim Crocker. I use he, him pronouns, although if you're using they, them more generically, that's totally fine with me, too. Um, I run and play a whole lot of games in the gauntlet. Um, Leandro and I are often on either side of the screen, depending on, <laughs> on what's going on. So, uh, and, and I've, I've, I've played a whole bunch with everyone here, except I think Dan. So it's, it's, that's great. I'm looking forward to playing Dan with you. So, um, if you recognize me from outside the gauntlet, it's probably because you bought a game from me at some point, uh, in, at a U.S. convention. I work with my friends in the Press Revolution and Goodman Games. Um, I rep for IPR, I work with them at Origins and Gen Con, I work their booths, and I sell their games at conventions all up and down the East Coast and in the near, uh, near Midwest at places like the Double Exposure Shows, Metatopia, uh, PAX Unplugged, PAX East, some of those shows like that. So obviously I don't have a lot going on right now, so that's why I have the luxury to play in what would otherwise be like work day times in the United States for, <laughs> for Americans like myself. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, uh, and yeah, you know, like Will, I'm here to play a superhero game. You know, it's a gaslit superhero game, but this is a superhero game and really enjoying it immensely so far. So um, if you're interested in hearing me talk about this and other gaming stuff I'm doing, I'm on Twitter at Jim Likes Games, just like it sounds. And I've got a website, jimlikesgames.com, where if you wanted to buy a game or two for me to help me kind of, you know, keep my head above water until the next convention start up again, you could do that. And I've also, you know, I, I blog a little bit and have a little recap podcast and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Uh, uh, apropos of absolutely nothing, I saw someone post on Twitter, I think it was Kira McGrand, they posted the first time they ran Games On Demand on Origins. And I was like, ha! is that Jim's name? Hey, that's Jim's name. I know that person. That's my name because um, uh, Evan Torner, Kira, and I were the folks that got it going. So, like, you know, Evan kind of was responsible for sort of, sort of starting up the, the Games On Demand format, was kind of one of the earliest adopters of it. And Kira was a resident of, well, still is, but was a resident of Columbus at the time. So she was kind of our person on the ground. And I was a retailer. And so I had a relationship with Gamma. And so I was the one that talked Origins into doing this weird, crazy thing that they had never done before. They're like, wait, people don't sign up for events. You just open it up, but there's still tickets, but they're, no, 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 don't worry, it'll work. And now it's like one of the, like people go to Origins just to go to Games on Demand the whole time. So yeah. Yeah, that was the year where if you look closely at that whiteboard, my name is checked off for every single slot of running a game. And I did <laughs> yeah. that once and only once. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was yes, astonishing yeah, seeing no, no, all those check marks. Um, not, not doing that again. God, I wanna, I'd like to pick your brain about that we, part. That we piece. were so young then. Uh, it feels like there's like a great like conversation about that time in uh, indie games, but unfortunately we're playing a game. Maybe maybe some other time. Um, cool. Um, all right, up next, uh, David, can you introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, um, I'm David. I use he him pronouns, um, and uh, yeah. Oh well, I mean, I'm gonna I'll I'll double down on a, on a pre-existing plug, um, just to say that. Uh, um, uh, Leandro obviously mentioned the Codex zine um, earlier. Uh, I, my my first game has just been published in the current month's uh, issue of uh, of Codex. Uh, so, you know, if you are interested in checking that out, it's a kind of solo RPG. Uh, you know, wasn't wasn't specifically scheduled for 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 our current situation, but hey, you know, whatever works out. Um, uh, about um, investigating mysterious. Uh, occult stuff going on very much in the vein of uh, True Detective. Um, so yeah, that's in this month's Codex. Obviously, as I already mentioned, there'll, there'll probably be a link down to that below if you are interested in checking out the Patreon this month uh, and seeing it. I'm, I may well like reissue it myself in a couple of months' time if I can start wrangling PDF layout, uh, the next dreaded step. But um, 
uh, but yeah, uh, that's um, that's that. Uh, I am also on Twitter. Um, you can find me at uh, Chap of Steel, or one word, or all run together anyway. Um, and uh, I, mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend following me, but I'm certainly there. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, joining us for this session, um, Daniel. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, you're muted. Sorry. Beginner's um, mistake. My name is Daniel. Uh, I'm from Zagreb, Croatia. I use uh, the pronouns he, him. And uh, I've been playing RPGs for 25 years or so. Uh, but this is only my second time playing uh, on the gauntlet. And uh, I just want to apologize in advance if my English is a little bit rusty. But I hope it won't be. That's it. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, uh, do you mind if I ask? I got followed by a Forge in the Dark game uh, on Twitter that's uh, in development, and I think that was was that you. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I'm I'm working on a Forge in the Dark game, which is a fantasy game. Uh, it's based on Blaze in the Dark and some of the mechanics, but uh, it has a little bit different uh, underlying mechanics. It's based on 2D10. And I want to make a game which, with which I can use and, or play uh, different settings, like OSR settings, because I like to play a mixture of uh, narrative games and OSR. So I'm just making a game for myself. And uh, if anyone else uh, can enjoy it or, or wants to try it, uh, it's, it's free. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, I might put a link down below for folks to check out. Sure. Uh, it's titled uh, uh, "Heart and Glory." Hell yeah. So uh, yeah, check that out and everything else that everyone else has plugged um, down in the YouTube description. Okay. So before we jump into like uh, reintroducing characters and get into uh, the focus of today's um, uh, session, which is to resolve an, uh, an entanglement involving some dear fans of our of our uh, superhero group. Uh, I do want to talk about the safety tools that we are using for um, today. Um, we are using uh, lines and veils, uh, which um, are basically lines are things that like won't be crossed, just like won't, won't show up in fiction at all. Um, veils are things that can happen in fiction, but we're not going like, to concentrate on them. Like if it happens off screen or we like they get a sentence or two or, you know, we just kind of like, fast forward over them. Um, we are also using the X card for this series, uh, which basically means it's a tool to be used for when, um, if we stumble to a scene where any one of us, including myself, can feel uncomfortable, feel as uncomfortable about any, well, it could be like a, a, sp a small detail of the scene, like maybe a name or even just the tone of the scene or even like the entire like scene itself. Um, um, people can call for the X card, um, either on the chat or here on screen um, for, everyone to know um, and you know I might ask some questions on what's being X carded but uh, one you don't need to explain um, why um, you're uncomfortable with whatever we're X carding that's perfect no one no one um, gets no one gets asked that um, and two, no one gets the question if the X card is played we will respect if it's played and we will uh, address um, what uh, what the issue is, and then we will move on. And finally, um, we are operating under an open door policy, which basically means uh, if for any reason you need to step away from the table, and any reason's fine, like there could be an emergency you need to take care of, or uh, you're more tired in your thought, you need to like uh, retire or lie down, or you know um, you, you need a bio break, you need to go. Um, uh, the recurring thing that example I have is I've drank more than half of this coffee and not even started. Um, so, you know, might need to do that. Uh, we can call for a pause of the scene at any time and we will try to accommodate yourself. Um, that includes me as well. That applies to me. And I would say like, if usually I will try to like give an estimate of when I'm back, like, so I'll be back in like five minutes or two minutes or 10 minutes or whatnot. Um, I will say that like, if I don't come back after that kind of like um, within a minute or two of whatever time limit I've given, if I don't come back, then then, you hopefully I would have tried to message why I can't come back and uh, you're free to like uh, uh, step away from the game, so to speak, because you know, I could be, there could be some situation um, uh, they have to address, et cetera, et cetera. It could be anything, but um, usually I'll try to, I'll try to give like a time if I'm the one calling for 
uh, the break um, before I went to the back. Um, okay, so um, let's get to know these characters then. Uh, let's reintroduce ourselves into this world of Duskfall. Um, I'll give a broad strokes recap of what's been happening and then we'll come to characters and we'll save our newest character for last because I kind of like, I think we're going to kind of start off with introducing them into the fiction. So, um, yeah, we've been following the tri the trials, tribulations, travails, any other things that start with T of the, of the group that's also that starts with T, the Twilight Patrol. Um, they've come together to protect the citizens of Char Hollow, which uh, now we have these like very swanky maps, which oh, I should have just like made them. I'll look them up in a moment so I can plug them. Um, They've come together to basically protect the, the citizens of Char Hollow from, you know, um, different predatory factions. Like, uh, well, according to this factions list, mostly, you know, people like the Crows or the Dimmer Sisters. Uh, we've, we've, we've tangled with some scores. We've saved some um, uh, unruly, um, unruly uh, brothers from getting entangled with gangs. We've, we've, broken up a snuff ring uh, ran by uh, a cult weird sisters. Some of us uh, has tried to, I say some, one of us has tried as uh, amidst trying to woo a ghost lady. Um, all sorts has been happening. And um, last time we left off, uh, we were all entanglements. And one of the entanglements is that like individual or faction or like, you know, a group that has been inspired by your group and is causing trouble. And we're gonna zoom into that, but let's get to know who these characters were zooming into. Um, and I, we're gonna go with the same order, um, mainly because it <laughs> leaves Dan for last and we're kind of like gonna open up play with their character. So we'll zoom back to Will, tell us about our cutter. Uh, yeah, the cutter is Solomon Reigns, who is a blue coat by day and the vigilante red coat by night, or more accurately, by whatever weird hours uh, Duskfall works on because it is a you know fallen world. <laughs> uh, and yeah, he's big, he's tough, uh, and he's basically like out to uh, you know take the red out of the blue and um, put the you know try and make the the blue coats mean something again, uh, even though he can't do that within the force. Yeah, he's, he, he took on two ghost Iron Man robot things um, uh, last session. I remember this. That was great. Um, after that is, uh, yeah, Sabine, tell us about our whisper. Hi, um, you know my name already. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so used to saying my name before introducing my character. I'm playing Sil 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 Silence Ravenglass, um, who works as a spirit warden during the day. Um, and uh, calls himself the Ra Raven Doctor at night. He's a whisperer. He has some uh, kind of uh, stuff going on with ghosts. He knows ghosts. He can threaten ghosts. He usually does that, threaten ghosts. He likes threatening ghosts. Um, he is also an academic of the highest degree. He has studied at the acad academy Obviously, of course, he knows a lot about spirits and ghosts. Do never doubt his expertise. He has gotten into uh, discussions with a person called Skurlock, who thinks he's a vampire and who thinks he knows some things. And um, um, I mean, Silas doesn't really think he knows as much as he thinks. Not really. Last time, he, I think he opened. Um, uh, uh, a door in a wall of ghosts, and then, um, yeah, mostly did ghost stuff. He likes doing ghost stuff. Also, mm -hmm. he likes, he has a family um, who also like doing ghost stuff, or who like pretend doing ghost stuff. They're a family of quacks, mainly. But uh, there is family, and uh, one of the kids of his family has gotten into with some uh, baby vigilantes, I guess, who try to emulate what we do, only worse, of course. But, yeah. And maybe his nephew is in that, so that's worrying. 
course, when we say maybe in a role playing game, we mean of course he is. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, up next, Jim, tell us about our lurk. Yes, I am um, Victoria Hightower, a uh, uh, society debutante by day. Uh, and the masked uh, burglar known as the Midnight Magpie by night, who steals from uh, the wealthy homes of, burgl well, burglarizes the wealthy homes of, um, uh, you know, Duskball aristocrats and distributes what she steals amongst the people and keeps a little, you know, like a commission for herself uh, in exchange for the good, good works that she does. Uh, and she has kind of fallen in with this crew who uh, are just, like, I, th I think she kind of got bored just with stealing stuff. Uh, and this, this, is, this has proved to be a very interesting um, uh, journey thus far. Um, I was a little indiscriminate in my use of violence in our first um, encounter. And that has caused some blowback and repercussions and caused me to maybe think about, uh, you know, where I'm deploying uh, my knives and, you know, like, like you know, hat, hairpins and stuff like that when I am uh, out on missions. Uh, but so far, it's been a blast. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, and despite the fact that, um, you know, one of my, uh, one of my fellow uh, debutantes, uh, suspects, maybe even just flat out knows who I am and what I'm doing. Um, I'm continuing to, you know, act with relative impunity and it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. And I'm sure that nothing uh, will go wrong and it will continue to just be, uh, you know, like, like a carnival ride for me. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. You know, Dusk Ball is nothing but made of, you know, happy endings and uh, great times. Um, uh, up next, uh, quite a bit of a contrast to, <laughs> to Victoria. Uh, David, tell us about our spider. Yeah, so um, I'm playing um, Daphne, Pen uh, Daphne Penderin, um, otherwise known as the Widow Penderin. Um, she is uh, an older lady. Um, a former, um, a, a former uh, um, uh, fishwife down at the fish market, short, stocky, um, jovial looking. She has, you know, has sort of uh, semi-retired to um, uh, run a boarding house for single ladies um, in uh, in Char Hollow, um, which uh, where where she uh, she's she's got a very uh, maternal streak towards her girls, as she calls them. Um, and you know, she as as a uh, as a she she's sort of a cornerstone of the of the local community, sort of a bit uh, you know, sort of the uh, the, the the village gossip, um, and generally knows knows everyone and knows a bit of everyone's business. Um, she has uh, associated with the um, uh, the Twilight Patrol. Um, uh, working with them to um, uh, to to kind of target um, uh, people who are, are disrupting and um, um, uh, harming the community, uh, and seeing that they're brought to justice, um, and uh, yeah, uh, generally um, generally kind of working a bit more behind the scenes to uh, to help um, uh, grease the wheels, as it were. Yeah, doing so well. In fact, uh, I don't think we've seen her physically uh, in any of the scores, we, or uh, that uh, we have. I think I think once in the very first one, but uh, her reach is long. Um, all right, and last but not least, we are introducing a new player character to this uh, motley crew of crime fighters. So, uh, Dan, why don't you tell us? Uh, just give us, like, you know, the the pitch uh, behind our slide. I will learn to unmute. Uh, I'm playing uh, uh, a character named Amrani. She is Iruvian, and uh, she was uh, uh, married uh, 
she didn't want to get married to a man who she was supposed to get married by tradition. So she escaped. She was she's in a, a noble family, but she escaped uh, this world after she got married and came to Duskwall. And uh, together uh, with her came her uh, younger sister, who she took with her because she didn't want to, the same um, uh, the, the the same destiny for her. Uh, but she is kind of conflicted because she respects uh, her traditions, but she just feels that her heart should not go to uh, anyone. Uh, so when she came to Doskwall, she joined uh, uh, a gang. She she discovered that she can make uh, people do what she wants them to do uh, by talking them into it or using uh, uh, lies. Uh, so she uh, descended into crime for a couple of years and she has done uh, something terrible in those in that time but then she discovered that uh, she doesn't want to be a part of it and now she's uh, looking for a way to atone for what she has done Um, uh, I guess, uh, I guess my, my main question is mostly with your sly friends, but, um, I guess, uh, the main thing I want to know is like the thing you did this, uh, terrible thing, is it like well known, um, that you did this or is it just like to yourself? Uh, the, the, the terrible thing that it, it's mm -hmm. known in the, I, I participated in the, I, I'm not sure yet what it is exactly, but uh, it's no uh, a well-known thing in the crime uh, crime circles. You're like a sort of, oh, have you heard about Amrani? That, you know, kind of, a, yeah. everyone, know, everyone knows the rumors about you and they know that you're yeah. connected, but you've done dark stuff. Yeah. Yes, I did, I did uh, dark stuff that I don't want to talk about, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but people know, yes, I'm known for it. And I want to get away from it, yes. Um, all right, so tell us about these these two of your slide friends you're connected to. First, tell us about your your friend uh, Basil ba Basil ba Baz or Baz. Yeah, or Baz? Ba ba I've always I've always read it as Basil Baz Baz Baz. Baz, Baz, Baz. <laughs> Baz, or Baz. Yeah, uh, he is a leader of the gang, the Lamblacks, and uh, I was uh, working with them. They are a group of. I don't know if you've met them, if the patrol has met them or interacted with them, but they are just a group of uh, thugs and uh, murderers that uh, operate mostly in crow's foot. Uh, and I have uh, been uh, known to, uh, I'm known to have worked with them. And uh, now they are my friends, but uh, I sort of don't want them to be my friends. I want to remain in good uh, good terms with uh, Basso, but uh, nothing more because you know I, I want to I want to join the you know leave the dark side. Fair enough. Um, and who is this rival of yours? This uh, drug dealer dealer Brill? The, the drug dealer is uh, because I, I'm looking for my little sister uh, and uh, it's hard because I have no one here in Dosco uh, and to look after her. So when I am uh, sort of joined the criminal milieu, so did she a little bit. So I want to take, uh, you know, protect, it, pr protect her from it, but... Uh, uh, it's hard because she's young and uh, she wants to. Uh, she she also is very capable and she wants to also maybe join this uh, this uh, the crime scene. So uh, so Brill is a drug dealer who is a friend uh, slash boyfriend of uh, my sister, and uh, I do not. Uh, I do not approve of that in a way. Yeah. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Okay. So 
I, I think I've got an idea then of how to bring you into this uh, score that's going to happen. But before we do that, I kind of wanted to uh, do this, uh, the, uh, the, the TV opening bit again, um, just to like uh, refresh everyone of like, you know, what their characters can do and, um, and how cool they are. Um, so yeah, in kind of like the, you know, the, <laughs> the open credits of um uh our you know our very highly rated and probably very well received critically well received uh t v show that we're doing uh or something like that what's kind of like the flavor that we get you know, what's kind of like the image we get of each of your characters and i think um i'm gonna reverse it and go from bottom up this time um to end with will um so give me a moment to think of that. Um, but yeah, um, what do we see of Amrani? Like, mm, just like, just like we get a shot of like her uh, doing slide stuff or doing what she does best. Oh well, well uh, usually uh, Amrani is uh, trying to work the. Uh, the, the richer middle class of in Dosquo. Uh, she is. Uh, uh, she wants to, you know, uh, I don't know how to explain it. She's uh, trying to get uh, as many connections as she's uh, uh, as she uh, can uh, in Dosquo and save them for future. For you know, if 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 in case she needs them. So she's. Uh, She's good at disguise, and uh, sometimes she takes up um, different personalities and presents them in different uh, uh, different parts of the town to uh, in order to uh, to get known, but without uh, being uh, found out as uh, the that woman Amrani who did that terrible thing. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah. So yeah, we just get a shot of like her like slipping into like yeah different disguises, like talking to. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's work, yeah, yeah. She's trying to join parties and uh, you know work the. Uh, she's not maybe joining the the upper class, but uh, she's uh, she she wants to have a social life. You know, she's uh, hanging around the uh, uh, Silk Shore and uh, clubs. Uh, just trying to make connections and earn some money. Is anyway. is this, this the kind of thing where you might run into like some young ladies out on the town having a good time? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't understand the, the question. Sorry, it, it is, so is the kind of stuff you're doing where, I mean, very specifically, like I'm a young lady with a bunch of, you know, wealthy friends and we're like, always going to parties and, you know, going to tea shops and all this kind of stuff. Is it, is that the kind of thing you're talking about where our paths might have crossed because you're trying to kind of get yeah. out a little more into society? Yeah, okay. probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. Could be one of those things. yeah. I could, cause I really like the idea that Victoria has met you and has no idea about this other life that you have. Okay. That would, That's great. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, we get a shot of like, yeah. Uh, Amrani schmoozing her way through uh, Duskwell society. Um, going up top there, what about uh, the Widow Pendry? What's kind of like the shot we see of her? Yeah, so I think we see um, a shot of Daphne and she's like, um, uh, you know, she's down on her knees, like polishing a front doorstep, um, yeah, scrubbing, scrubbing it clean sort of thing. Um, and we see, I think, uh, um, we see a couple of blue coats going past. Possibly, there's the, I think probably the the sergeant we saw her having tea with before, and she kind of, you know, waves to, to him, and he kind of gives her a, a nod as he walks past. Um, I think we see her like wringing out the, the washcloth between her two, kind of quite, quite um, calloused, quite big hands as she uh, she wrings out the washcloth, and the water runs out pink and runs down into the gutter. Red water running down the gutter is like big Watchmen vibes, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, all right, moving up from that, uh, Jim, what do we, what's the shot we see of Victoria? Oh, yeah, okay. So if we're talking Watchmen, I'm going to do a little Dave Gibbons kind of panel progression here where, like, 
we see her in her debutante outfit and we're in like a fancy, you know, like, like, like somebody's, um, you know, salon or something like that. And she walks up to a samovar, you know, like a big tea boiling, like an elaborate, you know, uh, the tea serving device. And it's all, it's like beautiful and ornate and probably has some, you know, like um, uh, stylized, like ghosts carved into whatever, you know, inlaid in filigree and stuff. And she's just marveling at it and she asks someone about it and they say, oh, that's a family heirloom dating back to, you know, the founding of Duskball. And like in the, the shiny kind of curved surface of it, we see her, like her face reflected back, just staring at it. And over her shoulder through the window, like is the sun hanging in the sky, right? And then like you turn the page and the next panel is exactly the same, except it's reflected her in her midnight magpie mask. The moon is over her shoulder. And like the window behind her is open because she's clearly climbed in up through it. And then like you see next panel is her smiling and her hands reflected in it as she, re <coughs> as she reaches out to it. Panel after that, like at our, you know, up in the clock tower, um, uh, there is a, you know, burly soot stained laborer who I paid a couple of shekels, you know, like, uh, uh, where do you want this? As he walks into it holding like, you know, this samovar uh, that I could not resist taking for our place. Nice. And I, I'm grinning as I walk in behind him. We'll, we'll have tea now. <laughs> All right, if everyone doesn't know, uh, yeah, the Twilight Patrol works out of a clock tower. Um, it's actually, it's a big blue square somewhere here in this, Map of Charhol. I'm gonna ping that. Yeah, you're you're down there at the at the south end. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> abandoned clock tower with your ghost butler. Jesus. Um, Sabine, what's the shot we see of uh, the Raven Doctor? Well, I think uh, we see him um, in uh, the old theater that he likes to frequent. Uh, I have to find the name, sorry. I should have done that before. Uh, in the, um, no, it hasn't got a name. So it's an old theater, it's dilapidated, it's run down. But you can still see there is a play going on. There are people who are performing some sort of, it's, it's pretty revolutionary actually with lots of sword fights and people shouting and stuff like that. But you can't hear the people, you can just hear a bit of music. Like it's a, it's, it's a pretty lively music actually. Like it's a kind of a charade. Um, it's, it's a bit weird and, but you can see just him, he's the only one in the audience and he's just sitting there and you can see that he's actually really enjoying this whole show. Um, and then the music starts to fade and you can just hear some ravens probably crowing and then the whole ensemble of the theater cast starts to fade away with the scene and you can see that this, the, the, they never were really there. These are just ghosts performing a play again and again. And he sits back and he sighs and then he puts on the, the Spirit Warden's mask, gets up wanders out to do his day job which has to be done but maybe he can gather up a pretty actor or actress for the cast today here's hoping yeah. um and last but not the least um will what do we see uh for red coat uh i think the uh, red coats is um a clip from the previous episode where he's fighting to ghost the iron man uh and, you know, it's that whole kind of uh, Batman the Animated Series style kind of uh, ducking and weaving in between blows and uh, leaping over their heads so that they can smash each other. Uh, and then, you know, artful shots of uh, a red cloak standing in a black, deep black background and stepping into the shadows kind of thing. 
Yeah, proper uh, Batman the animated series style kind of uh, those kind of shadows. Um, hell yeah. Okay, so um, I think we're going to open with Amrani. Uh, uh, well, I see the alias you've given her is the Fugitive Bride. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's evocative. Um, I guess I want to know, Amrani, like, where would you be where your good friend uh, Bazo Baz can find you? You know, he's just, he's, he's just, you know, not the light of your life, but because that's your sister. But, you know. Uh, Bazo can find me somewhere in, uh, maybe in a crow's foot in a... Uh, I do have a map uh, of Crow's Foot. Let me ping you. Oh, you there. do? Oh, great. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there is this. Uh, oh, it takes a while to load. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's great. So there is a there is an Eruvian tea house uh, near the Eruvian Sword Fighting Academy. Academy, what it's called? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, which is somewhere in Crow's Foot, but uh, it's uh, where I usually go privately not to you know uh make connections in town so it's just like a, a my my little connection to the to the to my homeland and so this is where i go every time when i'm free to to have a cup of a cup of tea and to think about my life and to make plans and uh, stuff and this is where where basso can find me yeah i think Bazo kind of like just deposits himself right in front of you. Um, kind of like just kind of like a big thump. Uh, lands there. He has a plate of like eel cake, uh, with him. He just kind of like puts it down. And it's just, I'm Ronnie, you're uh, looking well. Thank you. What do you want, Basso? Oh, we can't even have uh, five minutes of chit chat banter. I thought you were all about banter. I'm running. Well, I'm not in a mood right now. I'm having tea. I'm relaxing right now. What do you want? Well, I, I've got some fires that need to be put out, uh, so to say. And he's saying this as he's like casually cutting up his eel cake um, and not looking as he's cutting them up um because he's eaten an enough eel cake to like just not have to watch as he cuts up eel cake anyway um i got plenty of fires that need to be put out and well if you could lend your help in putting out some of them you know the, i guess the quicker it is you can <clears throat> that's not really a secret you want to get away from all the charity work and community work that i've been doing that's just euphemism for crime stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I told you I don't really want anything to do with it anymore. Oh. So I'm, I'm having a, a hiatus. I, I, I really don't, I'm not into that anymore. I want to make an honest living. Oh, well, well, good for you. There's one particular fire that actually will probably, you know, serve your sense of, what do you call it, truth, justice, all that fun stuff. Sure, I'm sure that's fun. Um, don't worry, I think I've got a job for you that, uh, well, one would say you'd be doing a community a service. And not, not in the way I mean it, but, you know, in the way some folks mean it. Okay, I understand. Have you heard of the, uh, the Twilight Patrol? Uh, yes, I've heard of them. Yeah, sure. Well, who hasn't? Yeah, they've made they've, they've made a splash or two or three in recent times. Yes, but uh, well, it just so happens word on the on the street and the Crow Street, you know that street, one's in the street that uh, they've they've been yeah they've been making such a big splash that there are. Bunch of uh, young ones thinking they can do the same, and they've been making an incursion or two into uh, Crow's territory. And 
they've been making a bit of a fuss. And, well, right now, the, uh, the crows seem to be making a fuss back. And it would be uh, beneficial to the community service that I provide if the crows, uh, you know, find themselves a bit, bit more busy down there at Char Hollow. So you can take uh, over Crow's Foot, right? <laughs> well, that's a bit gosh the way you say it there, Amrani. You know, just out there in the open, we're out here in public. Like, come on. I mean, we should, we, discrepancy or dis discretion you know, should, should be a bit advised. But uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess I can, uh, I can, you know, do my stuff if, if it's the kind of community work that other people think, not the one that you uh, you think means. But uh, if, uh, and I can keep uh, the other eye closed for what you are doing in Crossfoot. Do everyone Which, you know, it's your kind of community work. Would you honestly say, uh, Hamrani, that the kind of service I provide is, is worse than what the crows provide you've uh you, you've heard what's happening over there yes what is happening what do you mean oh you know the whole nonsense with their leader dying and <clears throat> and their okay. new leader who uh may or may not have done him in it's well it's all scuttlebutt as far as i'm concerned but uh the main thing is they're making a bit of a show of force. They're crossing the bridge over to Char Hollow where that street fair, um, or what, what's the Dogtown street fair is happening. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, well, they're going to try and teach these red jackets a lesson. And, well, I need you to head over there and, uh, tell them Twilight Patrollers or whatever they're called. Uh, give them a heads up and lend a hand if you can. I can do that, I think. Spend it, spend the it. Eel cake. Sorry, the eel cake is very good. Oh, it's fantastic. I keep Where did you get it? Well, uh, I think like he leans forward. Well, you mustn't tell anyone else, but there's this really lovely bakery down the corner over at, uh, over at the Rag and Bone. It's, it's, it's lovely. Like, uh, tell them Bazo Baz said you, you'll get a discount. It's great. Oh, fantastic. great. Yeah. And this is the, 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 the award, the pay I get for, uh, for what I'm doing for you? The... <laughs> no, no, it's well. I'll give you this. You do this. I'll have, well, any more debt you have with me or clear. That's a good proposition. I don't even think, uh, even have to think about it. Hey, that's what all good propositions are, you know, the ones that are very simple, clear cut. Yeah. It'll be fine. Just, uh, you know, try not to die against the crows. I'll do that. Thank you, I guess. I think uh, he's, he tries to say like, you know, you know, pleasure doing business, but he has eel cake in his mouth. It's like, mm. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think we've reached the hour mark. So we're gonna take five and then we come back. Uh, we're gonna have some one of you is gonna meet with Amrani and then we'll, we'll know the shape of this score and then we'll do, you know, gather info, interact with folks. Before we jump in, so back in five minutes. Okay, so in that break, I looked up who made uh, these fine, fine maps. Um, shout outs to Tim. I can find them at dog underscore blink on Twitter. Uh, they've also made a uh, dog version of Blades in the Dark called Dogs in the Bark, um, which is it's just fab. Um, play as a bunch of street dogs uh, trying to live their lives uh, fighting the rat catchers and 
<laughs> and other stuff. Um, all right. So we were discussing kind of like in the break, like how Amrani would know or how would the Twilight Patrol know of Amrani? But I do kind of like, you know, in Blade's fashion, probably like just cut to her meeting the gang. But we have there's like several avenues. We've kind of determined like everyone can be kind of connected to her. Um, oh, Jim, you have a suggestion there? Sorry, I need there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have really established like if you're in the neighborhood and you need to get in touch with us, like what do you do? Uh, what do, is yeah, what does parti- is there a particular dead drop? Is there a you know? Do oh, you... we did we did have that um, ring the bell. That's right. We had the bell thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but I we had a we had a bad symbol thingy. Yeah. 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 So uh, Dan, since you weren't here, uh, we established. So, yeah. So um, Amrani should know about that. I think. Yeah. If you when you yeah sure when you so what do I do? I ring a bell. I go to the clock tower or um no, no. how we did is no. like okay, you can summon uh, the Twilight Patrol by tolling a, a bell any bell thirteen times. Um, okay. Uh, I guess we should frame like where are you when you like summon them? Well, I know they're somewhere in Charhol, mm-hmm. uh, so I will maybe uh, and uh, because I'm situated in Crow's Foot, I will maybe go somewhere near the the Charhol Bridge and find maybe some uh, church or uh, something that where there is a bell that I can ring. Yeah, we can say there is a church uh, uh, there at this uh, Hungry Lane. It's called Hungry okay. Lane. What is that? Um, yeah. So, like, it's probably like, yeah, some small kind of dilapidated church, and you just find your way to the bell. Yeah, I do it uh, at a time when uh, it's most quiet. Uh, sometime where people are maybe sleeping or uh, hungry lane, yes. Well, maybe some t- at a time where there's uh, the fewest people around, so I, the, the bell would be better heard and I would uh, be able to sleep in there unnoticed. Yeah, and the way we kind of frame this, like when the bell, after like the 13th bell, that's when uh, the Twilight Patrol's ghost butler, uh, Soren, kind of like senses it and sends the the patrol on their way um i guess like so who who do we want to like send over there i think last time we sent the widow um who was the one who did the talking um i guess like i kind of want to know like uh hmm. yeah i think i was just said like who does everyone go um go ahead will I mean, I'm I'm happy to uh, be lurking in the rafters or the shadows or whatever, like step out, like uh, from the darkness, kind of thing. Uh, you know, as he's there in the darkness of the temple of the uh, the church, and the bells uh, rung, and it's been quiet for a while. Uh, just uh, hear a voice from the shadows say, "Bells only supposed to be rung by those who need it." Oh. I'm a little scared now because I I knew that I was supposed to ring a bell, but I, nobody told me what to do afterwards. So I was, you know, just like waiting in this uh, dark, abandoned uh, church. And uh, when I hear this uh, uh, this voice, I jump a little bit, and then I say, uh, "Yeah, of course, uh, I, I need help." No, really? Why don't you go to the yeah. lamp why don't you grease some more palms for it? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is different. <laughs> How do you know about the Lamblex? Who are you? you may Show yourself. Uh, red cloak steps forward into the uh, red coat. Sorry, steps forward into the uh, you know the light peering through the the church ruins. Uh, it's a, like a it's the it's the blue coat uniform with a like a helmet on, but like it's all like dyed blood red kind of thing. And he's kind of like, you know, it's like uh, urban legend, like the bat kind of thing in, in Gotham, you know? Okay. I uh, I'm take a few steps back because I am a little intimidated by this uh, 
this appearance and uh, I'm just like eyeing the door if I need to okay. run away, but I don't. I suppose the significant thing that, you, that Armani would definitely know is that the gang, the Red Jackets, uh, have taken their attire, you know, their fashion uh, cue from from you, yeah. from Redcoat, yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, okay, I say uh, this is this is really different. Uh, I am not working for the Lamblacks. I'm not a part of the Lamblacks anymore. Anymore. All right. Spit it out then. Your money won't talk here, so it better be something worthwhile. Well, I need a. I mean, I have information that you may find useful. Uh, your little red coats, or what their names are, are in uh, some kind of danger from the crows. Uh, they are playing, planning to extend their influence to Char Hollow, and uh, they want to intimidate the whole part of the town by doing something bad to your your young ones. My young ones. What's it to you anyways? I just want to help. <laughs> Can well, a person be honest and just want to do good in this town? In Duskfall? Yeah. I'm not from Duskfall. <laughs> nah. Eruvian. Better breed yeah. or so I'm told. Often at length. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I am a good person. <laughs> right, well. Uh, uh, and then I think he like nods over to, um, you know, his fellow Aruvian, the waiting in the shadows. Yeah, but I'm wearing the mask, so you probably can't really see my dark skin. No, yes. But, yeah, <laughs> but I, I think I will say, well, uh, my dear Rackplog, isn't that what we are doing? Good. To help people. Yeah. See? We should maybe not be so suspicious. Mm. And this voice comes from the shadow. You probably didn't see him there because he's wearing a lot of black. And then he has this black raven mask with a long beak and a large hat. You can't see who he is, really. But you know that this is the raven doctor and probably Silas Ravenglass. So, okay. so yes, I mean, there I, are I, many rumors that these I've are. I've heard of all of you and... Uh, I, I'm feeling that you may be trusting me a little bit more, maybe not uh, completely, but I uh, relax a little bit and say uh, that, uh, yes, I, I, I truly just want to help. I don't know uh, how you have connected me to the Lamblacks or any other crew. This is uh, the issue here and we should focus on the issue, right? Well, well, the past always will intrude on the present if uh, it is not resolved properly. That's true. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, well I tell you what, you can prove how much you want to help. Where's this going to take place then? It's going to take place in, in a few days in this uh, Dogtown Carnival or... Or a street fair. Street fair, sure. <laughs> you know. And then I think, and then I think, like from where you're standing, <laughs> like from literally right next to you, like 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 right over your shoulder, a voice says, "Carnival? Why didn't you? You should have started with that." And like the magpie, and like I've got like you know whatever like 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 tight black leather armor, you know, like a, like a Catwoman kind of a get up. And my, and I've got a thing where I've got a, um, like, not like a, like a full head mask, but almost like a, like a domino mask that kind of flares out a little bit and it looks like it's got little wings kind of coming off of it. Um, and I'm just like sitting in the pew next to you somehow I ended up there like, you know, whatever, who knows, dropped from the ceiling, came up from a floor or whatever, but I'm just like sitting there like casually, like my feet up crossed on the pew in front of me. Um, uh, carnival, you say? 
Yes. I jump, I'm scared again a little bit, but uh, I, okay. Uh, how many more of you are just going to appear out of nowhere? Well, yeah, well, you will have to wait and see. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, maybe this is how you welcome people. So I'll take so, it. Do you, uh, can you, there is going to be a carnival. You, you, I think you know about this, right? No. Uh, I mean, is this, this has this has probably been announced in the in the streets of Charhalo, right? That there is going to be a carnival, Leandro. So I yes, will say. Yes, I can see Victoria not knowing about. Yeah. It, yes. Yeah. I actually, sure. I will. I will look at her little, and say, Victoria. Low brow for my, Victoria. My, yeah. My, I will say, my dear, uh, it has been announced. There's a carnival. It is probably not up to the standards you're quite used to. Oh, oh, I. The magpie flies above Pardon dog me. pound after all. I, 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 I should hope it is not up to my usual standards. That is what will make it amusing. Now you, um, do you possess any useful skills or are you simply hiring us to do this? Uh, I have some skills. Uh, but you're just going to have to Trust you, you me, see I don't her, know, what do you... her eyebrow arch over the mask like, hmm, okay. Okay, I, uh, uh, what I do is actually I'm um, uh, somehow uh, disguised myself to not appear as myself. I am a very uh, tall woman. I do not wear a mask, but I, uh, I have a makeup that uh, appeared, that makes me appear really different than my usual self. So how do, to, how do we know that you are who you're telling us you are right now then? Uh, because uh, you have heard about me. You know me. We have met Victoria. Excuse me? Yeah. So I... <laughs> oh, I like this. I, 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 I say, stand oh. up and I, I stand up and I pull the mask off and I throw it down and I stamp on it a couple of times. And I say, oh, I, I like don't this know one. why I, even I like bother. this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we have met in the, that casino in uh, Silkshore. Yes, I remember mm -hmm. that, but I was supposed, I was trying to, well, yes, absolutely. She, I have never seen anyone wrap. Uh, a dealer around their finger the way she did. I imagine this was a, a social wrapping around the finger and not a physical one, just to be clear here. Oh, no. Yes. 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 It was, it was quite subtle. And uh, frankly, I felt like I was in the presence of a master. Subtle is nice, yes. Thank you. Well, I say we put these skills, these skills to good use then. Why don't you show that you can prove, us, prove to us that you mean to help and we'll have a look at what's heading off the crows, you right? You do um, understand that if you mention a word of this to my family, you'll end up at the bottom of the river. Yeah, okay. I don't really want to talk about family. We have that in common. Excellent. I think we're going to get along smashingly. Good. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to prove that I am? Well, we, 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 we will we be doing a, uh, a gather intel for this okay. uh, score. Then it feels like that's a perfect uh, use of the sides, you know, showing that they're in it for. Yeah. The I was say, like, well, probably, yeah, well, cutting the scene like as Amran is like, yeah, what do you want me to do? Uh, I do want like a quick scene of one of you or maybe all of you telling or talking to the widow about, oh, this person, this, I don't know. Um, I don't I want, know, is, is she there, the widow? And is it just subtle enough not to come out of the shadows? Or uh, do we have to go and tell her? I like to imagine that the widow's uh, got kids under feet, perhaps, or something. But oh, there's, <laughs> a, there's, <laughs> yeah. a, there's, there's a match girl out front on the sitting um, on the steps of the church who, you know, Ooh, like the Baker Street I'd irregulars. I'd actually like to hear, hear that from David. Yeah, yeah. That was a suggestion. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, I think for, for this one, I think the, the, um, 
uh, the widow will have have um, uh, um, let the others go off and, and uh, get the initial case on it. Um, so I think maybe yeah, we just get like a. Um, um, uh, oh no, actually, um, I um, um, I think um, we get a shot back to the clock tower, um, and um, uh, we just kind of see like the uh, the, the widows like you know again just sort of tidying around in the um, um, in their sort of um, you know boardroom as it were. Uh, when we sort of see the, um, um, I've forgotten his name, but our uh, ghost butler um, appears um, and just kind of like murmurs something in her ear, and she just says, "Oh, I'll set an extra t an extra place for tea then," and um, you know, uh, puts down another doily and puts a, puts a tea set out on it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think. Um, um, yeah, I think we're just gonna move into. Uh, gather info and people can call for like if they want a scene with uh, another character um during this uh gathering info bit um basically like if gathering info for you is like you know just to help firm up what kind of plan we want uh what kind of detail if you want to like color in more uh things about this score um i do want to know yeah what how what each character is like doing or how are they if if they're interacting with amrani how are they finding them um um and yeah if you need to like think about what your character would be doing like find out about stuff there is stuff to find out um and if anyone has an idea feel free to like chime in um i think um i think the widow her um her main focus is going to be um on finding out stuff about the actual carnival itself um, and what's going on and what's going down there. Um, and I think probably her into that is going to be that she's like, I think maybe helping out setting up some of the stalls and, you know, all, all that sort of thing for it. Um, but is is using the time to kind of chat with the other, the other folk that are, are working there and, and, and helping um, get things sorted. Cool. So I think, um, this is going to be a fortune roll. Um, I've just noticed that you can just roll your action and there's an option for fortune rolls, um, which is super neat. Um, what do you, cool. what action are you rolling on this? Um, I think this is going to be a, a, a consort role um, as, um, um, as yeah, she, she's just kind of, you know, chat, chatting with people in, in the process of like, you know, cleaning up the streets and, and hanging up the bunting and all that sort of thing. Oh, let's see what you get. Oh my god. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's uh that, that that is some info there. Um uh, double check gather info because like, i mean you're gonna get a lot of info uh, i presume i think um i think i think uh, this, the, the question the thrust of what um uh of of what my question is going to be is probably what's really going on here which is one of my gather info questions and i think that's kind of the she's trying to pick up on like if there's something going on behind the scenes that she should be aware of yeah i think um you you know from the start and here's kind of like the base info and we're going to build from that you know from the start that like this kind of street fair this kind of carnival isn't that common especially on this end of char hollow that's usually down you know down south where the market is because you know open space makes sense this is like way too close to um you know to you know the the border so to speak of the char hollow district it's 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 almost provocative to like do this. I think what you'll get and um, ooh, which of your uh, girls, so to speak, uh, do you think is also working in this um, um, uh, carnival? Who can probably tell you what you found out? Oh, um, I think it's um, um, it's uh, Labelia who is a um 
um, she works, um, she's actually a flower seller. Um, she, she doesn't own a, a, um, a stall, but she, she like, um, works for, um, um, she works for someone who, who owns like a, a, a flower stall and she, uh, yeah, she's, you know, she take, has like a little hand cut and she goes around selling flowers off of it. Yeah, I think, um, uh, I think, uh, you get some like info, um, so I'll give you like the kicker from her, but the other info you get is like, yeah, this street carnival is new. It's going to come out of nowhere. And like, there is a lot of like, um, folks from, uh, folks who normally wouldn't be doing this sort of thing as like laborers, like, uh, you know, Char Hollow is like full of like, you know, people, you know, uh, because you made an effort to know about, you know, sailors, workers and whatnot, but there is like a lot of like ex soldiers, um, out and about helping, uh, set up this place and I think uh, you get like the cherry on top from the Belia who I think like tells you probably back the boarding house that um, ma'am um, I know you uh, I really didn't know who to tell the, it is Hold on, let me close this curtain this sunlight is getting in my face <laughs> um, ma'am I, I don't really know who else to still there um okay you know what heck it, it's just gonna stay there um oh, man I, I you know what i'm gonna bring this to the character as well she's also kind of like uh, uh um i really didn't know who else to turn to but um you you know that street street fair folks are kind of like setting up um well well I, uh, well, I was telling you about this girl I met uh, a month ago, you remember? Uh, um, this, uh, she, is, she is an ex-soldier, I was telling you. <coughs> Things seem to be like working out fine. She's, she seemed, you know, nice. Um, well, she's, she's, she's got a bit distant and I asked her like, you know, if, she's, if she was busy doing this sort of thing. And she said uh, she was really busy uh, working on on the street fair and I had some more questions and we had a fight and I know, you know, fights are not, are, you always tell, tell us to come after you at the end of the fight. And she, well, she's, and, you know, I told her about, you know, she's an ex soldier and whatnot, but she, she, well, I found out that she's like, you know, she's part of the, those, you know, those red jacket uh, folks. Um, oh yes, dear. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, she's not just part of it. She's kind of like leading. The, them lot, the, the those red jackets, and that this whole street fair is just, uh, she called it like a big red bullseye or or you know a big red like come come at us crows sort of provo provocation, uh, and there's gonna be uh, a lot of the. Uh, she said like she said like you know. Well, the street fair is a good idea. I mean, I, I, I was all for it as well. I wanted to provide flowers to that, but um, she says that, you know, there, she, there's this fight that's going to happen and they're not going to shy away from it. Oh, well, that does sound a bit uh, dicey, dear. I don't know. It's a very good idea to be going around provoking people like the crows. No, that sounds uh, dangerous. Well, and, and she sort of pats her on the arm and say, I'm... <sighs> I can't say as I think this is very sensible, but I'm sure I'm sure that they'll they'll keep each other safe if nothing else. But you make sure you don't get involved in none of this. You you you, you don't want to get mixed up with uh, with this sort of street brawling or anything like that. Does that mean I should uh, should uh, stop seeing? Um, uh, what was the name I gave? Galena. Okay, that's the name I gave her. Does that mean I should say? Stop seeing uh, Galena. Oh well, dear. I mean, I trust you to make a sensible decision on that. I mean, well, I wouldn't. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't be the first to get mixed up with someone who's a little bit, uh, a little bit dangerous. But as long as she's treating you well, still, then she is nice. You honest. do what you want. She's real nice. Uh, she actually don't, don't tell her I said this, but you know she. She really, she really likes flowers. So she's all tough and whatnot. But she, she, <laughs> she really knows her flower stuff. She's, she's really smart. 
promise. That's good to hear. And uh, well, you, you know, I would say if, if you if she does cause you any trouble, just have a word with me and I'll straighten her out for you. But yeah, just you just may want to avoid being too close to her if things do go uh, do go south at this uh, um, at this carnival. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank. 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 Um, thank. Thanks very much, ma'am. Um, I think like uh, I think probably like this is at the boarding house, so she's probably sharing yeah tea and whatnot. This seems kind of like what regularly happens. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Cool. Um, do you have any like follow up questions? I can just tell you because you know you've got. Um, I, th I think that gives gives me yeah I, th I think that's that's enough if, if there's anything else you think would be useful to know but no I think that I, I think I'm satisfied I can't think that there's anything I want to press her on particularly okay cool um all right anyone else have anything they want to like gather info about? Oh, I do I do I would like to talk to my nephew I guess because uh, he's uh, probably involved with these bread jacket um people and I think I want to talk to him about how he thinks this is a good idea and what's going on anyway. Um, okay, where do you find your nephew? Um, Jeremiah, I think it is. Jeremiah uh, is Tiff's eldest. I think he's maybe 18, 17, 18, something like that. He's quite interested in ghosts. So um, I think I will find him hanging a about, I mean, he's a teenager. He's been hanging about a sort of a graveyard or crematory or something like that. Like where the cool kids hang. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not going as the Raven Doctor, obviously, because I need him to recognize who I, who I actually am. And I think he knows that I am a spirit warden. Yeah. He might I, not really know that I'm, he might have maybe somebody told him that there might be a suspicion that Silas Ravenclaw, and he he knows that I use that name. It's not my it's not my real name. But um, well. I don't know why. But imagining he has a pork pie hat, I don't know why. Um, That's fine. <laughs> okay, I think uh, yeah, I think he's expecting you, and you kind of like come up to him. Uh, how do you announce your, like your presence to him? I will not swoop in like the Raven Doctor does because that's weird. He's my nephew. I just call out and hey, Jeremiah, ah, good to see. Uh, what are you doing, um, Uncle Silas? I'm uh, I'm just I'm just taking in the the ectoplasm in the air. Uh, don't don't. It's not good for your lungs, kid. Well, well, maybe in a big gulp, but you know, in small doses, it se it's, 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 it seems to be nice. Um, <sighs> Yeah, you probably should know how to do it right if you're really into this. Well, you can teach me. Um, uh, Mama yeah. always said you, 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 you knew your supernatural. I know my supernatural, sure. Um, look, uh, Jeremiah, one other question. I've heard from Tiff that you've been running with uh, this, these record, Red Jacket crowd. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, that's the I'm not going to let. I'm not going to lecture you. You're almost grown. Um, I guess. And I just, uh, I just want to know what's going on. I have some, I have some people who I know who might want that information or might. Well, what kind of people? Are they the kind of people who help, or are they the kind of people who's gonna like? not let us help hmm. depends on what's going on okay i think uh yeah i think uh this is another like you know fortune roll i think uh, there's some risk here um yeah what, but what, what are you rolling with i can't attune to him he's not a ghost so I mean, if that's what you want <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean he's sucking an edge no no, I actually uh, might need to lean in a bit harder to use command, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you lean in? Uh, I will lean in a bit. I will say, look, um, Jeremiah, you can now, you know, you have a choice to make here. You can talk to me or you can talk to your mom. Who do you think has more understanding of what you're trying to do here? Uh, all right. Well, uh, command. And yeah, if you click on that, there should be a 
uh, thing for fortune roll. If I click on that, there should be a thing for fortune roll. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Submit. And effect standard. Is, yeah, it's just standard. Cool. Bonus dice none, I guess. Um, yeah. Oops. I've already yeah, five. submitted. Five's good. Five, you get five's good go. details. Okay. Clarifying and okay. questions are cool. are available. So I think like uh, I think he, he sags and uh, it's like okay, uh, well okay, uh, I I mean. I mean, you you can't. Okay, I, I look. I'm just doing this because, well, you know, mom's worried, and you're doing all you can. But I gotta step up. You know, I I like you said, I'm 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 nearly an adult. Someone has to look after my my, my family, and and you do that by tussling with the crows. Someone has to tussle uh, them. Um, did you did you hear about what they were they were doing in Char Hollow? What were they doing in Char Hollow? Yeah, we, like I'm sure. I know it looks like uh, the Red Jackets. We just came in and just started, you know, trying to cause trouble. But the crows got there first. They there's the there was a. You're just a businessman. Uh, let me look at my name generator. Um, sure. Uh, Anton. And he... The, no, the crows came in. Um, you, know, you know Anton? He works out in the, uh, in the pissing alley. Um, mm -hmm. He's trying to start a pawn shop there. Uh, and it was really hush-hush, but... If you talk to him, he's there, but he's scared stiff. But the crows came in, you know, silently, and they're trying to like buy up his his stuff. And when they didn't, they wrecked his place. And and I don't know what they did, but he wouldn't. He didn't tell anyone. It it just slipped by. He wouldn't tell. He wouldn't tell. You know, the Twilight Patrol or anyone. I only knew this because um, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend knew, and he brought it back to to our group. And it's like. Yeah, and, and we thought, you know, the Twilight Patrol are doing this. We can do this well. We've got some big heavy hitters in our gang. Uh, we thought we could do it. But What are you using to fight them? Uh, what's the Dusk Bowl equivalent of hockey pads, uh, to quote the Dark Knight? Uh, you got a suggestion, Jim? Yeah, probably, like, they would probably have... Um, um, like whatever people use in the factories and stuff like this, right? They've got like, you know, aprons that like steel workers would wear or like, you know, thick heavy gloves that you use for handling the caustic stuff that comes out of Leviathan oil or something like that. It seems to me that like, like they would use what, like whatever keeps them from getting hurt at work is what they would bring to a fight, I imagine. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Jeremiah tries to make it seem really cool. Mm, yeah. He has just like steel workers smocks. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that's all. That's okay. That's better than nothing. That's better than what I expected, actually, because it's protective, and I like that. But I will. I will look at him and I say, Jeremiah, you know this is dangerous, right? You know that if you if something happens to you, Tiff uh, and the kids, they're left alone. Okay. I mean, I do what I can, but uh, word warning doesn't matter that much. So uh, you're going to be at the the carnival then? Of course. I don't know. I ha I'd have to work. Okay. 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 I'll, so just be careful. Okay, I'll, I'll, kid. I'll be. I'm. I'm smart, uh, Uncle. I, I, I. I'm careful. I'll be. I'll you're be smart. You're huffing ectoplasm. It's, Jeremiah, don't tell me that you're smart. It's not really That's not smart. It's, it's just it's like, not smart, kid. It's, it's like eyes up here. I, mm -hmm. Is it really huffing if you're just like breathing? It's just breathing. It's not really. It's not a concentrated. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Good. Like give him a that little little slap. Not a really a slap on the on the head. Like okay, love you, Ruffle, kid. Yeah, Ruffles here. Love you, kid. Be careful. Damn it. And I'll, then I'll go and figure out what Anton's about, I guess. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, I, I do want to ask the other three. Like, yeah, what are you doing for Gather Info? And then I think after the break, we're going to jump into Discord. But yeah, what's, I'm sorry, uh, that was too fast for me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I spoke way too fast. But that means I finished all my coffee. I'll say like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to ask again the other three what the characters yeah. are doing to Gather Info. If you have ideas, if not, that's perfectly fine as well. And we'll probably like, come. We'll get to the engagement role. Either uh, or I think that's fine. Uh, I was just, I was just going to uh, just see, has anyone uh, been paid off, and can I find it, like some information about what the, you know, what forces that kind of the uh, crows might bring to bear, kind of thing, like or where they'll be coming from, you know, they'll set the blue coats uh, backhander or whatever to say, like you know, leave your patrols out of this area. That's where we're going to show those red jacket punks a lesson, kind of thing. How do you find? How do you find that out? Like, what do we see the uh, uh, red mm. doing? I think this is as Silas, and I think uh, I think it's probably just a fortune roll because mm -hmm. it's just sort of like trying to, like you know, or I guess a consort. But I think that would be the same as a fortune roll because I don't have any rank in it. Yeah. Like. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, if you roll that, you're just gonna roll two dice and take the lowest. Um, if you roll like a command that or a command an action rating um that doesn't have any dots in it so there's still, there's still gonna be a role i yeah. just want to know like yeah fictionally what we see red coat doing which is yeah, uh, looking into that uh, yeah I, I think it's the case of um you know uh like canteen kind of stuff the you know group of uh maybe grace the extortionist who uh is my neck my rival um you know she's part of this heavily corrupt uh squad of uh, the oh, blue yeah. coats and you know, her and the maybe her and other person are uh, also a member of a squad. Are you know discussing like kind of a? Oh, I made so much money this week. You'll never believe what they've paid me for. Not to go down a street. Can you believe it? I'd do that for free. Could this be a crowd <laughs> then? If you're like listening in on. Uh, sure. Why not? Yeah. Prowl about unseen. Uh, yeah. There's more stuff there, but like you know, prowl is yeah. kind of like what I think for like. Stay yeah, it's in the, they're in the station house, and this is me. This is Silas, like sort of uh, carefully picking his way through the locker room or whatever, you know, like may, not drawing attention to himself, but listening in, uh, blending in with the rest of the sort of department kind of thing. Um, would that be a? Well, I just roll it, right? Yes, because it's, yeah, it's just a fortune roll. So standard. Don't need any bonus dice. Got yeah, five. Five, yeah. So I think uh, the gist of like kind of what you get, and there are follow-up questions, and I think. Yeah, Grace is like kind of ecstatic about kind of like this most recent payoff. And so excited, like she is blatantly blurting it out for uh, people here. I think she's just saying, ah, glad to see that, uh, you know, Crow's new leadership knows who to pay to. Um, glad to know that uh, Lisa or whatever the hell she's named herself, <laughs> actually. Can you believe that she's start she there's this, she's starting to get on this trend of all these weirdos giving themselves names, calling herself Corvide. Imagine that. Corvide. What's <sighs> but uh at the very least she knows uh you know she knows uh, which which pockets to keep full. And yeah. And I think uh there's like more chatter about uh um exactly what streets. I think uh it's very clear that like they are uh, clearing, they're not going to be anywhere near Dogtown or, or the Char Hollow Bridge. I think uh, they're, not, they're really not going to be there. And I think uh, the extra bit you, you hear is that like, uh, and just to be sure, they're going to be lugging something big, apparently, into Char Hollow. So uh, if any, any of you see like an eight foot tall box, being dragged uh, on the, across that bridge. Well, he didn't see anything. You got that? And and yeah, her sick of answer like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, thing, crazy. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Uh, cool. All right, I think. Uh... <laughs> yes, Curry Lock is just in that box. Yes. Um... <coughs> okay. Um, what about uh, Victoria Amrani? Is there anything you're doing to prep for this? Um, yeah, go ahead. Go for it, Dan. Please. Okay. So I uh, I would like to know what the crows are planning. 
and uh, yes, I, I want to get uh, some info ahead and uh, for the for the crew. So I'm thinking I will uh, uh, make a disguise and uh, somehow go to a place like a pub where some of the the crows are uh, going. So I I cover myself. I disguise as a, as a street beggar. I cover myself in rags and blacken my face and teeth and uh, put dirt on myself so that I'm totally unrecognizable. And I will just sit in a on the street near the near the pub when they where the uh, near pub where the, in uh, in crow's foot when where they gather and uh, just try to listen in on their conversation and try to decipher if there is uh, something they are they are planning or talking about about uh, uh, regarding the, the the showdown. Okay. Um... Yeah, I would say just uh, try to gather info. I'm not, I'm not interested in putting you in a tight spot at the moment. Um, okay. So, what are you? What action would this be? So, I'm thinking a survey, maybe because I'm just listening in. I'm, I'm not trying to get too close, or but uh, yeah, that's it. So what I do, I click on it, and yes, and you see, yeah, so you know, risky control, then everything, and there's a fortune roll. Fortune roll, okay. And just standard attack. Okay. Slight. Can I push myself? Um, uh, this is just, this is Gary info. It's just a fortune roll. Um, okay. So you you still okay, get yeah, info. Right. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Four. Four is pretty good. So four. four is yeah. standard info. Um, oh yeah. Get good details. I think yeah. You hear some crows kind of like grousing. You know. You know. Just the end of the day. Being like the name of, I think you hear this like a uh, particular uh, salty uh, gal saying, ah, "The name of the gang is the Crow. So why the hell is uh, Lisa sorry Corvide? Why the hell is she bringing us out to Char Hollow? Ah, she's just like ah, she's just leaving this leaving this place for the lamp blacks and the red sashes. The name of the gang is the Crow. So what's she's not been right ever since Rorik died." And her drinking pal is just like, well, 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 the scuttlebutt is that uh, Lisa, uh, or Corviday, no, not Corviday, she's, uh, well, we, well, when I say she, I mean we, we've got ourselves a patron. And, uh, someone's pushing us to uh, move on to Char Hollow. And the uh, salty gals are like, what the fuck is there in Char Hollow that we don't already got here in, in Crow's Foot? And uh, her furtive friend, that, that's his name now, furtive friend, is kind of like looks around and says, well, uh, well, there's some territory has not been unclaimed. There's some good uh, places to like, you know, put in some roots, but um, and I, and you didn't hear this from me, but I heard this from Bell. Uh, you know, Lisa's uh, well, Carvey's second in command. That uh, there's pressure from this patron to move on to Char Hollow. And again, Salty God's like, why the fuck? Why? What are we meant to do there? And for the friend, is like, ah, bust some heads, mostly apparently, some very specific heads. Some, uh, Crime fighting heads, actually. And Salty Gal's just like, <sighs> and uh, she takes her pint of beer and drinks it in one go. And she starts grousing about uh, her marriage woes, and <laughs> the conversation moves on. Uh, if you want, if you want any like clarifying or follow up questions, like, uh, feel free to go. I think I'll give you one because it's a four. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh... No, I have no questions. I think this is good information that there is a patron and maybe the, the, the patrol will, the Twilight Patrol, the guys will have a, maybe know what that means. That's what I'm thinking. So I just wait it out until they leave and then I move on. Okay. Um, and Victoria, is there anything you're up to? Yeah, I'm going to co-case the joint. 
like, you know, if we know where this carnival is happening, I'm going to go, you know, wander around. I'm going to look for, you know, where are there rooftops where we can see the place from, you know, if we're stuck in the middle of it, what's the quickest way out? Are there, you know, is there access to the sewers? Is there a convenient drain pipe that someone could scramble up to get to a roof over here, stuff like that. And just kind of get the lay of the land so that we are not going in there blind. Yeah. Um, I think I'll give you like the very basics uh, and then we can gather info. Um, sure. Uh, right, got here. Uh, you know, it's at this street fair is, I'm marking the map. It's right on the banks um, next to Char Hollow Bridge. This, Beautiful uh, uh, encircling <laughs> that I've done here. That completely makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's like a riverfront carnival. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how? Uh, what action do you want to make a roll to gather info? Like I feel, I feel like survey is the thing that just you know. I mean, that's literally what I'm doing right now. Yes. Like I'm not, you know, I, I'm not doing anything particularly. Um, you know, like, I mean, I can literally just kind of walk across the bridge in my Victoria Hightower duds with my girlfriends and just walk along the riverfront. Oh, this is lovely. What a lovely riverfront walk we're having. Oh my, there's a place where you could put a boat. Interesting, you know, as we're, you know, going along there. So let me just, uh, I've got one dot in survey. So let me just throw a, I'll throw a die there and, and see what happens. Uh, and and should I? I'll just assume risk risky standard. Right? Oh, there is like an option for an all fortune roll if you click on the position. Um, uh, as in, if you're picking position, there's no risky, uh, control, desperate fortune roll. Oh, okay, cool, excellent. Okay. Oh, I see it there. Fortune roll, nice. Yeah, and don't worry about effect. I can just say standard. Um, No bonus dice. And there's my four. Well, yeah, best get your mixed successes uh, out of the yeah. way. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing but sixes from here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, you get good detail. And I think um, what you'll kind of see, um, actually, since it's good detail, I'm going to ask you, what do you see? Um, what is the detail you think you add that's like telling you why the hell are the crows just kind of like how are the crows going to do this, like make the show for us, or at least um, what's it oh, that could be useful for you? I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to stick with my boat idea that like the carnival is going to be right along the river. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could, you could bring a boat full of thugs, you know, right up to the pilings, you know, under, and, and probably what you would do is pull up under the bridge where people couldn't see you pile out and then climb the whatever the ladders or the access ways next to the bridge. And you could have a lot of people there very quickly and then get them out of there just as quickly. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think uh, we kind of get a shot of like Victoria seeing the bridge and kind of like just ima seeing kind of like, uh, we get like uh, the quick cuts of like seeing where the uh, crows would like come up. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Okay, I think uh, we've reached another hour. Let's take another five minute break. And then, yeah, we're just gonna jump into engagement and see how we all do. Um, all right, back in five. Okay, so time to go for engagement. Um, I'm gonna go through the thing. So first, you choose the plan. Um, the target are the crows. Um, they're just to like get it all, get all the info up, up top. The target are the crows and what they're going to do is they're going to make a show of force by coming into Char Hollow and messing up this lovely street fair carnival that's kind of been organized by the Red Jackets <laughs> um, uh, as a bit of a provocation. Uh, mostly to get back at the Red Jackets coming in and incurring on their turf, although there could be other shenanigans there, but that's for later sessions to find out. So um, how are how is the Twilight Patrol approaching this? Uh, there's uh, you got six uh, plans, and again, we don't need to like uh, fully flesh out the plan. That's what flashbacks are for. Um, we just need like the plan and the detail. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel like uh, like this this sounds like a, a straight up 
you know beating them in the face thing i figure we could do something more more subtle to throw them off but they're a gang coming here looking for a fight i mean i'm i'm definitely i, I like the idea of it breaking out into a uh, into the street fight that the crows didn't expect kind of thing um I am not, uh, I have to admit that I am not a very good fighter in a street brawl, though. But I might um, cause some deception. So, maybe, de maybe deal with an eight-foot box that they're bringing in, which has Skurlock oh. inside of it. <laughs> if there is Skurlock inside an eight-foot box, I will put him in my uh, cupboard and occasionally consult him on issues that are not of great importance. <laughs> But I do not believe that uh, Skolok would come into this as in an eight-foot box being carried by street thugs. He seems to have, uh, at least he would have people dressed in suits. Um, I will give him that. He has taste. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, just because the plan is assault doesn't mean everyone has to, like, get to a fight. Everyone has, like, ways to, like, contribute to the score. Um, this is just going to be, like, yeah, the starting... Um, this is going to be just kind of like the main plan is like it starts off an attack and who knows um but is everyone okay with going on an assault plan uh the, the detail will be the point of attack which i guess when they come up the bridge because magpies surveyed uh the place okay um i guess we're kind of ambushing their ambush sort of stuff yeah like Okay, so uh, up next is uh, each ca each player chooses their characters. Load, um, yeah. Uh, give you all a minute to think about how much stuff you're carrying. Uh, you're gonna have with you. Since we aren't going for subtle, I think I will go with a heavy load. Mm -hmm. That means, like, yeah, you're visibly uh, looking for trouble uh, because all this stuff is on you. Well. I am visibly looking for trouble. These these okay. crows are coming into the raven's roost. They will not leave with their feathers intact. Oh man, if you can if you can draw up like a quip on how ravens are better than crows, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be really fun. I think I'll go with heavy as well. That's a good point. You know. Um, I'm gonna stick with light because that's, that's generally how I roll. <laughs> what does a heavy laden with a weapon even look like? Yeah, because like don't don't we we get a weapon for free, right, or something like that? What is oh, our... uh, you have re yes, you have vigilantes attire, which is two free load of weapons or supplies. So you get two free load worth of supplies or weapons. For example, you could carry uh, subterfuge supplies and a long blade for zero load. Oh yeah, you mentioned yeah, that's one of your uh, vigilantes upgrades. Um, you have the favors special ability where you could uh, spend one rep and describe how one of your contacts is put out to help you and you get a dot in an action your contact is killed in for the score. Um, I will mention that your two contacts are a ghost and a nun. So I don't know if they, <laughs> I don't know if they'd be much help with an assault plan. I mean, uh, Soren might be good at fisticuffs like Marquess of Queensbury. Yeah, I learned this in the stage old when back when I was alive, old boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's picked their load. Um, okay, so time for the engagement roll, which is always fun. Um, all right, so we start with one die for sheer luck, and we go to the major advantages and disadvantages. Is this operation particularly bold or daring? You kind of like taking this the fight straight to them. Like it's not subtle for sure. Yeah, I think we're 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 kind of like a big public scene almost, you know? Like something that we don't normally do all that often, really. Like it's more kind of like people witness our our escapades rather than like we do it right in front of everybody. Yeah, this is kinda of like a coming out party for the Twilight Patrol almost. Mm -hmm. Um cool. So I'll give you that die. This op this operation is this operation overly complex or contingent of many factors? Not really. <laughs> Fairly straightforward. Um, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? I would say yes, because uh, you know you figured out where they'd be coming from at least uh, those bridges uh, for sure. I'll give you that. 
Uh, is the target strongest against this approach? No, I don't think so. Can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? And you can just say it again. Look at your any friends you have or contacts and say if they can provide any like further insight. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, Will, you're muted. I am friends with a uh, pugilist uh, who might be, you know, attending the Dogtown Fair as well and a reliable sort of person to, you know, an extra set of hands kind of thing. Yeah, so that's a that's five dice. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. So <coughs> extra pair of hands. You've got the red jackets. Um, are any enemies or rivals interfering in this operation? Um, Grace is around uh, for sure because she's been paid off. Um, so I think that's enough to cancel that die. I have to take a demerit, I'm sorry. I, you still have four dice. You uh, still we, have... We, we also get my bonus dice for... Uh, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot you have that. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, all right, so back to five. I will say though, um, tier-wise, you're still at tier zero and the pros are a tier two, so I'm gonna take away another die because you know they're just that bit tougher. So you're still at four. Four is still pretty good. Um, uh, Dan, since you're here and you brought this score together, do you want to make the engagement roll? Um, there should sure, be a, sure, sure. There should Where be is it? For a fortune roll in your character sheet, if you go underneath your sly friends, you see roll fortune. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it. Roll fortune, so four dice, right? Yeah, four dice. I'm doing nice. it. <laughs> okay. There's a six percent chance of you just getting one to three, but it's six percent. I did see it happen this last weekend, which was amazing. Um, I did four, four. Is, you're still in a risky position. Uh, still, four is pretty good. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna ask you all to paint the scene of this street uh, carnival, and. Um, before we get to where your characters are, before where I kind of like, you know, set up where, where the position is, because you're going to start a risky position. Um, I kind of want to know what, what's in the street festival? What, what, what's in the street carnival? What kind of like, uh, att attractions or any like, uh, you know, stalls or what kind of sites do we see? Uh, I guess each of you just like contribute a detail of this, uh, uh, street fair. And, uh, I'll start, uh back with will and go down um the listen roll 20 if that's okay sure um i think uh what are they called is it the the lost yeah the uh the ex-military people uh you know like i think they're uh they have a stall like a kind of um you know like small podium kind of thing where they're like uh <laughs> handing out like pamphlets and uh, things like that and sort of rallying people kind of you know like oh workers of dosfall all you have to lose is your chains kind of stuff uh. yeah um um uh dr the raven doctor dr the raven doctor <laughs> dr raven oh well i think um what we will see here is uh as a data for the carnival uh we will see a St uh, stand where um, there is a kind of weird mixture between uh, car I forget the name of uh, what they are called food stand I guess and um, um, uh, the soothsayer because they do they do deep fry dough and put it in hot oil and boil it and then they drag it out and then they read the signs of this uh, these the, the forms that this doll makes in, in, in the hot oil and they will tell you your fortune about this. And I think that has to be, that absolutely has to be Silas's family, the Bowdens, because that is the, totally the thing they would do. Like sell people uh, pretty stuff that would usually be pretty cheap, but you get a prophecy with it and thus it gets more expensive. And they're calling this uh, reading the ghost bones. Ah, uh, Victoria, Midnight Magpie. Um, if it is between the size of like a hen's egg and um, like a bowling pin, and it is sharp 
or can be set on fire or um, looks cool being thrown, it is being juggled by a troop of, there's like a troop of like half a dozen just like very skilled jugglers that are, you know, that have an act and they've kind of claimed a chunk of the the land there and are passing clubs and throwing flaming batons at each other and, you know, probably doing a little bit of fire eating and stuff like that. But they're like very adroit, um, you know, uh, the kind of troop of entertainers who, are, who have clearly practiced at this a lot and they've gathered quite a crowd who are very impressed with their abilities. I was muted, but I just said, hell yeah. So, um, uh, widow, the Widow Penderin, what's, what's the detail of this uh, street fair? Yeah, so I think like the, um, the, the sort of um, local eel fishermen, um, the ones who just kind of go out in little boats around the, uh, around the rivers rather than, you know, out sea catching leviathans, um, have all, all, all the sort of crews are each of the individual boats. Um, they've got their they've got their boats out of the water and the boats are all like covered in like um um you know um streamers and painted up and stuff in in bright colors and they're sort of carrying them along on their shoulders sort of like by the with them um, propped up on oars um as sort of like makeshift floats as a, and they're sort of like dancing down the street with them you realize there's a lot of a lot of things you're putting there that could be under threat. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm Ronnie. What's uh, the last detail we see of this uh, street fair? Okay, there, uh, there is a stand where they sell um, like pocket watches, but also you can buy a few uh, large clockwork uh, animals, like pets, like uh, cats or monkeys or stuff like that you can wind them and they do some tricks they dance or they walk or they do stuff but uh, some of them may be even uh, little hulls that you can use for something else they have some spirits inside them For God's sake, I forgot I was muted. Um, I was mentioning, I was talking about ectoplasm this time. Um, uh, powering these little clockwork toys. Okay, so here's, here's how you're all in a risky position. Well, I say you, the folks in this carnival, <laughs> the people you just detailed. Um, I think like, there's like, the, the carnival uh, goes for like, you know, a good two to three hours. I assume you're all enjoying yourselves wherever you are and you'll have a moment to like, tell me where everyone is. Um, once everything kind of kicks off. But I think um, you all see this kind of like tall box um, on the other side of the Char Hollow Bridge. And you can see that like it's on a cart that's being, you know, dragged by uh, Duskwall's fa famous Akarosi goats. Um, apparently there are no horses in Duskwall, but goats. Um, and there are two people um, in, uh, on, on the front of the cart. One of them is, you know, the, you know, guy, an NPC looking guy. Uh, he, he, he looks like, you know, he, he's a get, clearly a gang member of the crows. And I think the way you notice, know like they have a feather kind of like insignia, like stitched to their like breast, uh, so to speak. So, and he's got like a pointy hat and he's driving it. But st standing next to him is this rather tall, fierce looking woman. Um, She's got a cloak of feathers uh, on her shoulders, and uh, she's got this like uh, tussled, like fiery, just kind of like red hair, kind of like, flaring behind her, and she's kind of like uh, uh, arms crossed as they're crossing the bridge. And the fair almost kind of like not all of them like stops, but like a good few of them sees as they're carrying this like really tall, eight you know, eight foot tall box as they're crossing over the bridge. And I think like they just stop like right at the edge of Char Hollow. And she says, I thought that this street fair is open to everyone. Don't mind me. I'm just passing through. And here's where, and I think what happens is like 
suddenly I think you notice like there's quite a number of people who are putting on like red jackets or like those red coats uh, that they they've got. And I think one of them, um, one of them like just the moment they, they one of them just pulls out a gun and Lisa, uh, this this woman in the, in the cloak fairs is like, that's all I needed. Uh, she smiles and she gets off the cart and the 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 box opens up and you see, well, you've seen you've seen them in the at that black and black house, uh, these halls, but this one looks much taller. Um, the, their hands are massive. It's got this big, bulky, like cylindrical body, and the face is re- disturbingly animate. It's almost like there's like different pieces of like marble to like articulate the face, and it just kind of like hunches up. And Lisa just kind of like just goes, and this hulking metal body is kind of like get off the cart and march towards the uh the street fair and the red jackets are like ah shit um and they did not anticipate an eight foot tall metal robot thing uh coming at them and i think uh wherever you are uh magpie i think you will see that like there there are boats coming down the canals there uh, there's quite a number of folks uh coming in i mean as it happens i am i am um uh uh reading a dime novel in a hammock that is strung under the bridge. So like like I'm I like like the carnival that's fine they can have fun but I'm I'm just waiting for them to show up. So I'm chatting with the pigeons that are roosting up under there. Yeah. I think you feel above you uh, you hear the mechanical whine and you feel like a boom. boom. Clank clank yeah. clank yeah okay. Yeah. Hmm. I, I I I hope they're up to dealing with that. I save myself. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think like uh, you. Uh, well, let's stick to you because you can kind of announce where you are. Um, you see, like yeah, the, the you you see the first kind of like the first boat coming in, and it looks like uh, you know, it's like five people on like a fairly large large ish row uh, uh, rowboat, um, and you know they look like they're ready. They're pulling out like you know you know batons and knives and whatnot. And, you know, one of them is shouting the uh, Dos Boy equivalent of looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Um, or not exactly that, but uh, it's of the equivalent, you know, big gristle, gr- grizzled looking guy leading them on. Um, so that's where you are. Um, actually, if you don't mind, like, let's scroll through where everyone is and then we'll come back to what you do. Um, where is... Um, where is uh, doc- the Raven Doctor? I keep calling Doctor the Raven Doctor. Yes, the Doctor the Raven Doctor is, um, he's probably, well, we knew that this box would come over the bridge, right? So he would have positioned himself uh, at some point where he would be out of the public, uh, public eye because he's pretty much suited up and he doesn't want to, people to see him before uh, he sees everything. So he might be on some sort of roof because sitting on roofs kind of is a thing. Um, and uh, yeah, he's there and has uh, now seen what he needed to see. And uh, you can see that he starts to get into motion to get down or something like that. Swoop down. Uh, Swoop down, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, Superhero landing. Yeah. What about Redcoat? Where are you positioned? Uh, I think Redcoat is dramatically off panel for um, to leap into the fight and rescue one of these red jackets that's in over their heads at some point. (laughs) Uh, All right. You know, when the real thing steps into the room kind of stuff. <laughs> Again, that opening of the Dark Knight he comes in and twists that guy's gun barrel. Um, cool. Uh, what about the Widow? Um, are you somewhere in this uh, fracas? Yeah, so I think, um, I think the uh, um, uh, Widow Pendrin is um, manning a refreshment stall uh, she's got like the big tea urn and lots of uh, lots of cakes set out in front of her, um, and you know, pretty much in in the uh, in the throng of things. Hell yeah, Amron. Uh, okay, well, I'm definitely one of the jugglers. 
uh, disguised as one. I want to be in the center of the uh, the, <clears throat> the carnival, but I am uh, wearing. I'm standing on these uh, sticks that prolong my legs. I don't know the English word, <clears throat> but uh, and uh, I. Stilts. I'm... Yes. Sorry. Stilts. Stilts. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, and also I'm uh, wearing little baggy clothes that I can uh, maybe uh, hide some uh, some weapons underneath. Yeah. yeah, and trying to juggle with some st sticks, maybe torches, fire torches, or something. Doing a, doing a pretty good, a really good job. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's cut back to the magpie. Magpie, you see. You see a robot of like yeah five intense looking dudes uh coming down um from uh i'm gonna say around here it, it, when, oh sorry i did not to select i just put a blue dot there uh here ish uh, <laughs> um what do you do so um uh i'm going to wait for the boat to land mm -hmm. and for them to scramble out and go climbing up onto the bank mm -hmm. And then just kind of like, um, uh, um, I've got like a, you know, there's like a, like a, like a pack slung there and I'm going to uh, grab that and just sort of tip out of my hammock and like drop down sploosh into the water. And we've established that I'm a pretty strong swimmer. I've, I've been like, you know, done, done this before and this kind of thing. And I'm going to like, swim up underneath that that rowboat and tie a line off to the back of it and then you know swim down um you know whatever 10 15 feet to to the bottom of the river and you know find a like a hunk of masonry or a you know whatever like like something down there that i can tie the boat off to so basically i'm not sinking the boat i want i want it to look like it's there but I'm doing a thing where when they jump in and start rowing, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, that sounds really awesome. Uh, I can see the results of this uh, once they try to get away from here. Um, like assuming you... any of them make it down here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what are you rolling with? I don't know. Like, I feel like probably this is Tinker because I'm messing with their boat, right? Mm. Like it's not, I mean, like there's nobody there to see me. So it's not like I'm, I'm, it's like I'm trying to sneak into anywhere or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, like, like Tinker is the thing that makes sense here. Yeah. Because you're, you're messing with the boat. Um, you can swim fine. We've established it. Yeah. And I'm going to take like, um, this is probably what like subterfuge supplies here to do something. Oh no, that's theatrical makeup. You go with oh, tinkering tink tools? Tinkering tools. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey. Assortment for detailed mechanist work, jeweler's lip tweezers, small hammer, pliers, screwdrivers, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, tinkering tools, something like that. That's fine. Well, you've got two free loads, so. Yeah, uh, some, some, some kind of toolkit, something like that, yeah. you know. Um, this may even, you know what, I may even just use like a, like, 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 like a climbing grapple and like tie it off to the boat and then hook the, yeah, just, just like a grappling hook that I use like an anchor. Yeah. So yeah, so so what I'm, yeah, so so I'll just I'll just knock off a a climbing gear here. We'll call that we'll call okay. that climbing gear that I I repurposed for a different use. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, let's see. Uh, this is gonna be I think risky standard. It'll probably yep. be limited, mm -hmm. but you're we're gonna say there's some tying this down is kind of like bypassing security measures, and you're not affected by that, so you're fine. Yep. Risky standard sounds good. Um, risky oh, standard i will say that you're um actually no i'll, I'll introduce this thing later because like there's no clocks for effect to affect yeah, not, so this is risky standard not not yet anyway i've only got a single dot in tinker so i think i'm going to uh oh what's the devil's bargain here Ooh, yeah uh i think the devil's bargain is that there's gonna be uh because i think uh, can I say that like you jumped in as soon as like they're in backing out? I think the devil's bargain is going to be one person who's going to see you when you like resurface. Uh, oh, they left, okay. Like, they left, like, okay, uh, I like I didn't think they left a 
left uh, like like a lookout behind, but it turns out they did, mm -hmm. or 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 whatever. Some can, yeah, cool, yeah, you know, I I I I have to deal with whoever spotted me, whether my whether my dive down there works or not. I'm totally cool on that. I'll take an extra dive for that. Okay. All right. Risky standard. Cool. Uh, so here we go. Oh no, Tinker. Risky submit standard submit bonus dice one. Hey, there's my four. Hell yeah. Okay, so I think um, you know, they're gonna do it, so it's gonna be fine. You've got the yeah. the the boat uh, uh, there, but I think the complication um, is gonna be. Um, I think. <laughs> For some reason, I want to get really pulpy and just say an unexpected eel attacks you. Um, <laughs> um, so it's going to be just straight up harm. Um, let's say this is level one harm because I already gave you, I already added a, an, uh, someone who's going to attack you. So I think you're going to be, the, as you're kind of like swimming up, I think, yeah, an eel comes by because, you know, dust ball is uh, kind of full of eels. And sure. I think we'll just like, uh, kind of like, nearly like, like clump you i think enough to like graze you uh you know like cut you uh probably somewhere on the arm um when you're swimming in a creek and an eel bites your cheek that's amore <laughs> okay do you want to resist that uh yeah yeah i absolutely want to resist that i'll um okay, let me so see so Oh, yeah. I get to choose which category you're resisting in. This is going to be prowess. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that, that makes the most sense. So, yeah. uh, okay, uh, so I, I, I click on prowess up top, right? Yes. Okay, so I got that. No bonus dice. Just hit it. Boom. Okay, so you're going to take two stress. Four. I'm going to take two stress. Okay. Yeah. okay. But uh, So how do you avoid getting, getting uh, uh, <laughs> bit by the eel? Um, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm swimming up and I see it coming at me and, um, uh, you know what? And it's like, like it's come, it's gonna bite my face and I just kind of throw my arm up and it's teeth clamp around my, you know, whatever, like, like, like my, my gauntlet here, like, like my leather gloves that I wear. And so I'm going to come out with like some teeth marks in it, but I kind of like give it a little shake and and send it off and it's unhappy that it got a mouthful of leather instead of you know my my soft like like i said my cheek so <laughs> oh yeah so i think uh when we cut up we'll cut away from you i think when you kind of like re resurface uh i think yeah there is like one guy uh, <laughs> what's, like, what's all this then yeah exactly <laughs> it's like uh oh having a swim there sunshine uh <laughs> I think is what he says. And we'll cut to uh, the Raven Doctor. I didn't say Doctor, the Raven Doctor. Oh, I just said it there. Um, yeah, big, tall, eight foot, uh, big, tall, eight foot tall, uh, hulk, hulking hull coming at the street fair. Um, okay. Uh, well, I jump down. I do the superhero landing stuff. I get up. I, uh, I will not announce myself just yet, but people might notice me because I am fairly tall myself and I'm wearing this really big cloak. Um, it's slightly padded now because this is my armored cloak. Um, and I have my lightning hook, uh, in my, in my hand and I'm standing there, but I'm, at this point, I still I want to study the Hulk because these things are, if I can remember correctly, powered by some ghost energy, right? Yes, uh, I'll say I like your your study is going to be like a setup action, so whoever's going to follow yeah. up on it will get increased effect. Okay, cool. Because I uh, want to know how and where to hit this thing, where it is where I can get at the spirit. That's actually, I want to let the spirit out, but then, then fight it. But, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. I will, uh, oh, I think uh, I'll start out with a study action here because just straight out hitting is not really my style. Um, um, and my position is risky, I assume? Yes, it's going to be risky standard as well. You know this. You know what a hull is. You've, you've seen one fairly recently. Yeah. You know how yeah, 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 I know what that is, right. Um, 
do I get a devil's bargain? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, I am going to uh, add a four uh, step clock called the red jacket. Whenever that clock fills up, um, one of them is going to be seriously injured. Oh, okay. And yeah. It's going to start, one, it's gonna start with one tick. Okay. Um, I'll take it, I guess. Yes. Okay. I mean, okay. why not? Uh, uh, I, I mean, sure. Um, okay. Uh, is anyone I, helping? Since uh, people I have are in a position. A, but, but I have a question. Since this is a devil's bargain, this is a consequence of my action. Um, right? how, yeah, is, because, how, is, how is that possible? Because you're taking time to study while this oh, is. Right. Instead of. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Is anyone helping? Good question. Um, I don't think I could help the uh, the great uh, Raven Doctor <laughs> <laughs> in his oh, studies. It's true. I mean, it's a study role, so I don't know so, if any. Um, yeah, if yeah. we're helping, uh, how how could we possibly help? Is I mean, I'm Absolutely. also in front of the the hall, so oh, maybe true. I can help study it, or uh, you know, just. Yeah, uh, I I will say. Um, Throw something at it. I want to see how its R moves. Please. Maybe uh, there's like a flashback conversation to like uh, Raven Dog. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. I exactly. can do this. I can, I can, uh, you know, throw a stick that I have, you know, mm -hmm. right at it yeah. to see. Just how so it that I can is. see how it moves. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'll do that. So I mark one stress, yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. My position is risky. My effect, effect is standard? Yes. Standard. And then I get two bonus dice, right? Yes. I will submit then. Oh my god, that's a crit. Um, yeah. Okay. I think like, cool. I think uh, you're incredibly smart, aren't you, uh, Mr. Raven yeah. Doctor? I uh, am Dr. Raven Doctor, please. <laughs> um, I think uh, because it's a crit, uh, it, it goes up, to, your effect goes up. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think the extra the ad is like, I've Put two clocks in the Twilight Patrol uh, sheet. I forgot to make tokens, and there's there's two that needs to. Be, well, one of them needs to be filled anyway to mm -hmm. finish the score. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm gonna fill one for the Crow's Hall because I think you see mm -hmm. that like this is almost exactly like the holes you met at Black and Lack, but the, this one is quite a bit more souped up. Um, but in a rushed kind of degree, you can oh. see that like they've added like some more armor plating and some of the joints but you know it's like it, not ineptly but you know someone had to like weld them in very in, in a short uh that you know very short deadline um and you can see that like the way the head kind of heaves all that articulation that they added to the face it's a bit more vulnerable uh for sure and mm -hmm. i think like um and also you've added one take to the to its clock um, mm -hmm. so you know it's like weakness is just a bit more and I think uh, true like your. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted with the chat there. Um, for anyone who's watching this, but yeah, what's another? Actually, since you wrote a crit, what's another detail you notice that kind of like could be used by your friends? Um, can be used by my friends. Okay, that's a. I think, as you said, this welding job is a bit rushed. So I think the joints, they are strengthened, but they also are a bit more um, heavy going. They, they are more slow. If, if it wants to move fast, it, it will have trouble to get the arm extended fully and will walk very stiffly. It's, it's harder to hit, but it might be easier to topple. Yeah. Um... And I will convey this information in some arcane way to our friends who are attacking this, which I hope will be Red Code, because he is the go-to person if you want to hit a hull. Yeah, I yeah. think I. Yeah, uh, I was I was gonna add because you were you were waiting for a red jacket to save, and I think definitely uh, because this thing is lumbering towards the street fair, one of them steps up. Uh, he. He's got a longer coat than than the usual <laughs> coat that you have, and it's it's the way it's painted. It's like someone just slopped a lot of red paint over it. It's not it's not nice. But I think you know he's he and oh, bless him. He he's got he's yeah. I'm trying to. He's got like a baton. Uh, no, yeah. Club. Yeah. 
I can totally see that. Like uh, him, you know, and then I think the whole, like, you know, like knocks him straight back, like down to the ground. And it's like that whole kind of like standing over him about to do it. And uh, I think that, you know, Raven Glass uh, has that epiphany out in the shadows. Like, of course, the joint or the, the wheat over there. Exactly. And then um, like from behind, even further in the shadows, uh, you know, uh, you just see uh, red cloak, st- red coat step forward. This guy, like, well, that's all you had to say, and just leaps off the rooftop and uh, comes crashing down, two handed onto the uh, the hall. Oh yeah. Uh, what are you wielding? Uh, what kind of? Uh, I was re- wielding my uh, my signature baton, the fine heavy weapon. Hell yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, what are you rolling? Uh, I think that's a skirmish roll. Hell yeah. Um, I think this is risky great. Um, what, what Silas, because Silas' uh, thing was a setup action, so it adds increased effect. You would have started limited, but get a fine heavy weapon, and uh, limited because you know it's a big hulking thing. But yeah. you're going to go up to great because of Silas and your fine heavy weapon. Cool. So, uh, um, you, oh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I would, I'd like to assist with this if I may. Oh, are you using foresight? I am indeed, yes. Um, so, so, so yeah, I think we, we kind of, again, get like a brief flashback. Uh, when the, when that, that car is first coming over the, the bridge, uh, we just see, the, um, we just see uh, Widow Pender in behind the, um, um, the, 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 the refreshment stand. And she just reaches up and, and picks up one of the um, one of like the little candles in a glass, glass thing. Um, and pours some of the wax over like the um, uh, the safety valve on the tea urn, uh, and then we sort of flash back to the moment, and she's just like barreling down the street, uh, oven gloves on with this like tea urn, which is now obviously dangerously like hissing uh, out through all of the um, things, and lobs it um, at the uh, at the Hulk as um, um, as uh, uh, Redcoat comes in. Nice. I think it hits. It must hit and like explode in steam across the middle of the whole thing, like shrouding the whole thing in mist for a second. You know, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, does that give me a bonus dice? Yes. Yeah. One bonus die. One bonus die. So you're uh, you have four dice. Oh, two sixes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So great goes to extreme. So that's five ticks. Five ticks on this hole. What the. <laughs> Uh, for those who are watching, uh, the uh, the the crow's hull is an eight eight tick clock. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So, what does it look like when you royally wreck this thing? At least, like, have it like staggered um, as you land. I think it. I think it's like that. A overhanded blow like comes down and just smacks back the uh, the hull, and it staggers down, takes a swing at him, and he ducks underneath it, and then just like lunges straight in and then that urn comes crashing in filling the whole thing with smoke and as the smoke clears you just see uh red coat just like leap up onto the hull and strike exactly where uh raven glass pointed out yeah yeah i think yeah you've got you you've got like uh this hull's attention for sure and i think like the red jackets are kind of like in awe because holy shit it's red coat and he's being red coat and (laughs) Uh, I think like uh, they're kind of like forming, uh, not a circle, well, kind of like a half circle to like cheer you on as <laughs> you beat up this guy. They're going to help at some point. But I think, uh, and Amrani, I think, uh, you know, Amrani the Widow, you'll notice like uh, Lisa, the, the cor- cor- uh, self-proclaimed Corbidae, is just kind of like, fuck. Um, but I think you'll see like uh, four guys are climbing out of the bridge. And they're almost not noticed because the spectacle of Redcoat is just, incredible and i think uh either amrani or uh i think i'm going to amrani because we heard and then we'll come to the to the widow i think you'll see yes. that um the the crows are kind of like forming up um and okay. they're going they're gonna go into the street fair as in like uh uh you can see lisa's lisa kind of like directly was like oh wow all right wow they're fucking distracted get into the fair get into those red jackets uh, is is the hall still standing? Uh, yeah, he's two ticks away um, from getting completely beat up, so it's still standing. It's like ah, uh, but it's rattled. Because uh, I'm thinking maybe I want to I want to try to finish it so that uh, we show that uh, 
it's uh, uh, if we finish off the hull, then maybe it will scare the, the others, the Lisa and the, the crows more. So, so I am close to it and I am, uh, I have uh, these large clothes, like a, like a clown clothes maybe. And underneath I have a, an unusual weapon, which is a long piece of uh, chain. That I take out and I want to throw it at uh, uh, the hull's feet, uh, legs. I mean, around to wrap it around the legs so that it crashes down if I if I do it properly. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, help. Um, yeah. Um, let, let's get to like what the role is uh, first, and okay. then we can see how uh, Doctor Ravenglass helps. So I think this is finesse, if mm -hmm. it's okay, because it yeah. needs a little bit of uh, you know proper handling and it's not really an attack just i just want to you know f uh, wrap it around the the, the, the legs so that it can't move anymore or that loses balance yeah okay uh yeah yeah at uh, finesse sounds good i think we're still in it's still kind of a risky position because the the sure. crows under lisa are like for, for forming up um so i think there's gonna be risky i think it's still risky standard jesus y'all are doing really well uh doctor uh, Raven Doctor, how are you helping? Um, this I still got my lightning uh, hook in my hand, I assume, and I still I I will uh, menace this thing with it because it is a ghost and it is not used to it, and I think I probably will just provoke it into moving, and that's when uh, a throw of the chain becomes even more devastating, because it, it's easier to topple it down if it's moving. And if it's just standing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Can I um, also push myself? Yes. To get another die? Yes. So you get two bonus die. Okay. So it's risky. And, and Raven Doctor, uh, take one stress for assisting. And two bonus dies to finesse. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Ah. Oh, okay. Oh, four. Yeah, four. Four is. It's still a success. That's the main yeah. thing. Uh, four is still a success. And on the standard, that's two ticks. So this thing is done. So uh, I want the three of you, Red Coat, uh, Raven, Doctor, and Amrani, to tag team this, <laughs> this hull and kind of like add a detail of how you can like take it down. I think after that blow, though, like Red Coat has to go on the defense, you know, because it is still a huge thing. Like even as it staggers backwards, he's like, you know, has to block a blow and like gets pushed back. Uh, Oh, go ahead, Amran. Okay, so if uh, all, they are distracting the, the hull so that I can maybe move, uh, jump up my stills and then move around, maybe around it a little bit with this uh, with this chain and just do a quick quick run, run around and wrap the, the piece of chain. It's not a, it's not a uh, really heavy chain, but it's, uh, it's enough to, if, if, I, if I manage to wrap, wrap it around a couple of times, then uh, it just, you know, pull the pull the legs together, and it just falls. And I'm I'm hoping that if since the the legs are not so strong, that it will topple and maybe uh, take some damage while uh, while falling from the fall, right? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it, you feel the clock, so it is pretty much. So it does. So it crashes. Uh, it's cra it topples and it crashes, and uh, the 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 head goes off and. Uh, arms also it's just all, all the it just falls into pieces when it when it comes to to the ground yeah uh, i think uh, do, uh i keep saying doctor the raven doctor i need to stop um uh raven doctor i think uh because you're you're with a whisper you're tied to this you 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 you, you see it crash and it kind of like splits and you can feel like the ectoplasm starting to like burst out um, I'll snag it with my. That was the plan I had. Yeah, I'll snag it with the lightning hook and just catch uh, it. Yeah, I think I think I uh, will add into this. But Amrani, uh, you did roll a four, so I think um, the the uh, the consequence. Uh, it'll be it'll be simple. It'll be uh, it'll be harm <laughs> to yourself. If that's right, I think you're close. You're you're you got close. So when it like split open, I think you're gonna get hit full force 
by the ectoplasmic like backlash before like the Raven Doctor can like snag it all. So that's level two harm, I'd say. Um, you're muted. Uh, so level two harm, can I resist it? Yes, and normally like there are, they suggest that like you know when you resist, usually you just bring it down to level one harm. But because we're playing with you know pulpy two fists of action, you, when you resist it, it, the harm goes away completely. So I'm okay. gonna say this is with your let's look at your stats. Uh, ba, 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 ba. This is gonna be with resolve because you're gonna get hit by some ectoplasmic ghost nonsense, kind of like trying to okay. try to burn into your brain. Okay, so I'll just click on resolve, right? Mm -hmm. No more stats. And I get so, a six. Yeah, so you get no stress. So how do you just tank this? What kind of like stops you from getting you know getting the full force of the ghost blast? Uh, what? The, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe I just uh, not sure really. Can I just uh, dive under uh, some kind of a stand that is, that is close or just? Yeah. When I do, I, I just tumble under under a stand or behind the stand that, so that I, I can get some cover. Yeah. As far but, as oh, go maybe ahead. even maybe even under that wagon they brought it in. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's a good position to for for, yeah. for the next move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm cool. Go. I'll do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um. So yeah, the, you resist the harm away. Uh, I'm gonna turn to the widow because like I will say like you don't need to fill that that Lisa Clark. I just want to see what you'll do. But this, you, you've taken away their trump card, uh, for sure. Uh, I think the crows were about to form up, uh, but they see that, yeah, the hull taken down, the ectoplasm go away, and uh, the Raven Doctor just kind of like hooked that. It's all very public. And I think um, this is one question. Can mm -hmm. I catch some of that ectoplasm in one of my ectoplasm vials? Uh, yeah, that's what cool. they are so just declare then that I will, and... then I will do that very publicly and very calmly just so they see um, you you can go for like actually no we'll come back to that later I think yeah I think I, I'm, I'm not interested in making a roll for this here you, you catch the spirit uh, uh, but yeah I think yeah the crows were about just about formed up there's like four of them and there's uh, Lisa but yeah I think the the uh the the hull breaking down is kind of like kind of like oh setting still um i wonder does the widow have any moves here um or do you want to call it to another person for the moment uh no i think i think the widow is um uh is going to um walk up towards uh the where the where the sort of crows were about to break out into the crowd um and uh, she says, no, nah, no, nah, boys, that's not my scene. If you want to start trouble here, you're going to have to go through me first. Um, and um, she pulls from her apron. It's just like the cake slice that she's been using at the, um, at the stool. But as she sort of turns it, we get that kind of like glint of light showing that the blade of it has obviously been sort of sharpened to a, uh, a razor edge. Um, and she's going to start to move towards the um, um, to, to move towards the crows um, with the intent to engage them. Yeah, um, I will say because in the interest of time, um, this is probably this, and we're, when we cut to magpie, we'll probably like resolve the whole thing and then we'll do debrief. But I do want to make this a roll just to see how. Uh, how the crows would like react to this uh what are you rolling um, um i was just intending to go straight in with skirmish um okay she's she's not expecting them to just back down at her word so she's gonna you know force the issue um okay 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 um all right uh i think this is still risky because uh the crows are still like two tiers above you um i'm gonna say because the hull has been destroyed, I think your effect is still is going to be standard. It would have been limited, but they're in a state of disarray. Sure thing. Um, and also, uh, I will mark off an unusual weapon. Um, but yes, um, yeah, uh, I will. Um, 
Do you want to push yourself or take a double? Spike? I think I'll push myself. Um, I think I'll push myself on this one. Cool. Two stress. Um, and anyone helping? Uh, I would like uh, Redcoat to, you know, as the whole this whole sort of thing goes on with the whole like glances, you know, like looks over and then just does a double take as uh, the widow pender in, <laughs> and uh, you know, he'll he'll come into camera view like in between the penderins fight and tackle one of the guys who's like, you know, uh, skirmishing with her out of the way. All right, uh, take uh, one stress and. No, we don't take uh, another bonus die. We've got Thank two. You. Jeez, these are big rolls. I should have mentioned uh, Dan. Whenever I run Forge in Dark Games, everyone just rolls sixes. Uh, only a five. Only uh, a five. Yeah, five, five. Um, I think what this the consequence is going to be a bit simpler. Um, I think. Um, okay, you're you're going to succeed. So you are going to like. Uh, what does it look like when you like? take one of them on um i'll give like as much latitude as you want like yeah no i think um i think that she kind of um i think f f there's that moment where they're almost just like stood they're not really reacting because you know she's she's a an an, a, an old woman uh you know who's 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 coming towards them and they don't really know what to make of it um but i think she kind of grabs um grabs some of the, one of them sort of by the um by the front of his uh, shirt and like throws him and she's clearly like a lot stronger than she or not even not even less necessarily stronger than she looks but because she looks she's big she's not well she's she's short but she's she's a bulky woman sort of thing um and she just sort of throws him and i think he clats into a stall um and I think he kind of comes towards her with a um uh with a club to to like strike down at her and she cuts him across the wrist and he kind of you know and this again it's like very this 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 like cake slice he's got is obviously very sharp and he kind of lets out a yelp and drops the club and grabs onto his wrist. Um Yeah. Uh, I think um the consequence uh, is going to be because you're going to kind of send them kind of like packing. And I think uh, Lissa gets this like just view of like click all of Char Hollow arrayed against her, all this like sea of red coats. Um, and yeah, the Raven Doctor and red coats. Um, there's, a, there's a clown um, underneath the wagon, but we'll get to that. Uh, and, but the scariest sight is this fucking Miriam Margoyle just uh, beating shit. Uh, getting rid of stuff. Uh, I think the consequence is going to be like uh, two heat. I think simple enough. Uh, I think simple enough because Li Lissa is already like has blue coat connection. So yeah, that's that sounds fair. Um, that sounds fair. Um, yeah. So I think um we're 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 on we're right about on time. So I think uh, if it's okay, I think we have one more shot for the midnight pack. Magpie actually have one last parting shot, and then we'll wrap up the score. So I think yeah, this guy's like. Yeah, you're fancying a swim there, sunshine. Like, like all these accents. I'm sorry. Is is like, he like pointing a gun at me, or does he have a knife, or or oh or, or just just taunting? Oh, he's got a gun. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I do one of these, and I kind of swim over to the embankment, and I, you know, and I climb up out of the water, and I've got my hands like, you know, I've got my hands like this. Um, uh, and. Uh, you know, and it's the thing where when he walks up to me to, you know, like I've got several knives very clearly in, you know, like a bandolier across me like this. Um, uh, and when he pointing the gun at me comes up to like pull the knives out, um, uh, that is when um, uh, I just reach out, grab the, the arm with the gun and... Um, spin him around and like that backpack that I'm wearing, um, I think what I'm going to do is just, I'm actually carrying like a red jacket with me that is like, you know, it's got that slim cut for me that we picked up last time that I see mm -hmm. on my character sheet. Um, and um, I'm going to like straight jacket him with it. 
like like whip, try and whip it around his arms so that like he's through it and the back of it is across his chest and I'm holding on to the back of it. And then I kind of whip him around and I, and, and I just start yelling, um, hey, you guys aren't gonna get away with this um, to the crows that are coming down. Yeah, they're coming down um, for sure. And, uh, the folks yeah. who weren't complete, the folks who managed to get away from uh, the widow. So I have a class ability, a special ability called the Devil's Footsteps. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend two stress to push myself. That also gets you the bonus die. Um, yeah. Yeah. When you push yourself, choose one of the following additional benefits perform a feat of athletics that verges on the superhuman or maneuver your enemies so they mistakenly attack each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay, what, what action are you rolling? Um, um, like, is the, I feel like this is finesse. This is like try to slip that thing onto him and yeah. whip him around so that he gets shot at. Yeah, yeah, all right, this sounds like finesse. Uh, cool, so you, got, you, you push yourself so you get that bonus die. Yep. Um, Ooh, I don't think anyone can help at this, this moment. R r risky standard, like usual. Yes, yeah. I think this is, yeah. yeah not, you have not moved from <laughs> risky this whole time, which is fine. Five. Okay. Oh, um, you know what? I didn't roll the bonus die. Hang on. Let, let me, let oh, me yes. just make a let me just make a fortune roll with that. Okay. Yep, I, I got a one on the second one, so so I'll I'll take that five. Okay, um, uh, this one's simple. I think uh, uh, I think right before you like shout like uh, hey hey I can't escape. I think uh, you hear him kind of like growl through the 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 the, uh, the the jacket you you put him on. You hear him growl saying, ah, "You're you're the one the nightingale wants dead." And I'm going to start a clock, um, which is uh, uh, the Nightingale wants you. Uh, it's going to be six steps. Would that fill us up? Yeah, they're coming for you. Um, okay. Uh, cool. So I think uh, uh, very quick, <laughs> I, I think, uh, so what is it you, you're intending? They come in here, they try to attack him? Like, like, like they're bundling down and they, they just see the flash of a red coat and they're like, get him. And they empty their pistols out, <laughs> you know, so they're, and, and, you know, and then I'll just drop into the water so that when they hop onto the boat, it's, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, they're not going anywhere. I think, uh, in the confusion, they can't, ro they, they're trying to row the boat and it's like tied in. And I think like all of Char Hollow is kind of seeing this. And they shot um, their own guy and yeah. Yeah, and I think like uh, the last person leaving is like li li Lisa, who like gets on the coat on the on the wagon, um, and will kind of like drive off. And I think um, I kind of like uh, we're kind of, sorry for like wrapping this up real quick because uh, we're a bit over. I apologize for that. Um, I kind of like a one because. Uh, Dan, we're, you're waitlist for the sessions, but we're still overnight to see you. I do kind of like one kind of like last moment for Amrani, maybe like after this whole fracas is done, because you've done it. You've beat the crows back. Uh, fairly minimal casualties, uh, besides the ones on the crows end. Um, I think we probably get like one last shot, maybe in the back in the church uh, of Ronnie talking to the Twilight Patrol. I have to say that I'm impressed by the Twilight Patrol. And uh, I, I honestly am. It's not a, it's not a lie the way you handle things. And I'm happy that uh, that we've done a good thing. I think yes. So it fills my heart with joy, and I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to do this with you. I'm a. Uh, a little sad when I'm saying this because I think that it's this is not enough enough for me to atone for my sin. But it's a good start. Yeah, I think there's like a grudging, like kind of like you know, not as in like 
yeah anything yeah yeah that's right that, that's it okay i so, will just say uh, you handled yourself admirably i would uh, enjoy meeting you again young lady so would i so would i yes dear if, if you're uh, if you're in the neighborhood do stop in for a cup of tea i'll do that and if you have some problems in up in crow's foot then you can uh, also look me up well our problem would be being in crow's foot yeah but uh, yeah maybe you i'm i i say uh, i tell you the the name of the tea house that you can find me if you are in crow's foot and in in a big trouble then you can look me up yes. we make another contact okay. <laughs> yeah yeah well well kind of uh we'll see uh yeah. yeah well even if i'm not there you can use the amrani as an npc or contact maybe oh we'll keep that in mind actually i'll note that down um and yeah if you come if we're you're back for another session uh sure yeah, pull you in um okay so let's i want to do it on screen xp uh we'll do that very quick um so let's let's go from top to bottom uh, again with red coat so will did you uh, address a challenge with violence or coercion? Yes, I did. How many times? If, if more than once, uh, you get two XP. I think only the once, to be honest. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I guess yeah, you 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 intimidated uh, uh, Amrani, but that wasn't really coercing her. No, no, I definitely. I think I was just the once, to be honest. Uh, I think I did uh, express my drives of protecting people. And uh, I did not struggle with issues of ice or trauma. So um, look, I'm I'm willing to like give like because uh, the second question is basically like you know did you think you express your character in an in, in an interesting way? Not necessarily like you have specific beliefs, drives, or heritage or background you have to put in. Um, okay, I think but, I, I mean you express your background by like you know uh, going getting info using uh, hmm. grace to get info. Cool. So, so that would that be two XP then? Yeah. Cool. I don't think I rolled a desperate action. I think it was a standard, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, it was all standard. Risky, was risky, yeah. The thing I was going to say is like, uh, you can trade position for effect. So if you're a risky standard, you can go desperate. Great. That's why oh, you, you get XP. I, I, I would, maybe I could have taken down the whole, the whole in one blow. Yeah, but you <laughs> kind of did anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. Uh, cool. Um, okay. So, um, oh, actually the other question that I stole from Lowell is, uh, what did we learn of, um, Red Cup today? Uh, I think, uh, we learned of, uh, sort of the double life that he leads, uh, knowing about Amrani, um, uh, you know, so like associating with all of these very corrupt people by, in, by day and not doing anything about it. Kind of thing because it lasts the job, sort of thing. All right, I'll I'll keep you one XP for that. Um, look, I just want you to get an adva <laughs> playbook advancement. You're one off, um, unless you want to put it in a uh, action. Uh, no, no. So do I? Did you put it in already, or do I have? A, have I filled that now? I can't. Uh, yeah, I've not put it in, so you can. Oh, so I fill up my playbook advancement. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, one last, one, one last time, Doctor the Raven Doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you address a challenge with knowledge or arcane power? Always. <laughs> I mean, yes, I did, but I think oh, I don't only did once because I don't think uh, the discussion with my nephew was with knowledge or arcane power, but the uh, whole Hulk thing definitely was. Okay. Well, I mean, you knew that he shouldn't be snorting ectoplasm. That's true. I definitely knew that. I pretty made that pretty clear. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that counts, so. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It might be a challenge in the future. It's not exactly a challenge yet. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that's. Yeah. That's uh, one XP. That's fine. Okay. And yeah. I definitely expressed my beliefs, drives, heritage, or background, both with my nephew and with defending my family on that those uh, those dogs. Yeah. Cool. So that's two XP. Um, yeah, I did not struggle with my with any issues. I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like uh, that's why Blade Power gamers go get a 
spend as much stress as possible to get their <laughs> to get a trauma uh, which is yeah that's that's uh-huh. that is how it is uh i will say like this kind of like kind of came up well actually no if jeremiah had been hurt maybe they'll be stronger mm. yeah uh, i didn't struggle I'll, really yeah i think about it in the future because you have mm. Everyone has those obligation vices. I should put them in peril. Just a bit more. Um, Midnight Magpie. Um, oh. Do I get XP for learning stuff about my character? Oh, yes. Sorry, or... I forgot about that. Yes, uh, that's my extra question. <laughs> what did you learn about the Raven Doctor? I think we learned that he kind of likes to make an entrance, right? With the whole armor. I mean, you saw the armor the, for the first time anyway, what that looks like. Oh yeah, all right. Take a take an XP. That's for that. four, four, I guess. Uh, can I put that only in playbook and advances, or mm. in the other stuff as well? You, yeah, you can put it in the other stuff as well. You can okay, cool. Where each yeah. XP goes. Okay, cool. Thank you. So you can put like three in prowess and one in playbook, etc. Um, I put three in playbook. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that gets you an advancement. Um, Midnight Magpie. Yeah. So um. Uh, address the challenge with stealth or evasion. Uh, yeah, so first I, I hid out so that I could sabotage their boat. And then rather than stick a, a knife through that guy and kill him because they'd been telling me, to, telling me to avoid violence, I made it so that his friend shot him. So that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, so I'm learning. <laughs> uh... Hmm. I don't know how um, if, if that's how Frey could see it, but okay, it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's um, to XP. Express your beliefs, uh, drives, heritage, or background. Um, uh, I think like the drive clearly was when you had each of us introduce ourselves, and I described myself stealing something pretty shiny, literally something shiny that I saw and brought back to my nest. Right, like you know, like the magpie that I am, um, uh, and I think. Um, uh, the background thing is when we were meeting with Amrani, the fact that she knew who I was and I had to deal with that. And like, like, you cannot tell my family, I'm not kidding. Um, was the other thing where like, you know, that's, that's my background came into play there. Um, oh, yeah. so uh, uh vice, vice or traumas. Not really. No, no, I mean, this was a very really... score heavy, yeah. uh, yes, yeah. uh, session T- touched on that. So you get four XP. And what did yeah, you learn? Yeah, yeah. I think the thing we learned is that I'm chafing a bit under that secret identity thing. That that like very clearly I'm like, is this worth the hassle? I don't know. But like I I you know it's a thing I'm supposed to be doing, but like I you know, the thing where I just like yanked the mask off and just threw it on the ground was <laughs> like I'm I'm like, oh she may just um, you know, she, she, she may decide to throw caution to the wind on that. And, and that's, um, and I don't even know yet, but she's going to do it that. So, so I think that's total of five, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Racking up and I, I didn't roll any desperate actions. Yeah. Again, this is a problem when I run stuff. No one rolls desperate because everyone just does great. There's no justification for putting things in desperate. Oh yeah. David knows this. He was in that band of blades campaign. Uh, speaking of David, how did the widow uh, do XP wise? Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I actually don't think I did address a challenge with calculation or conspiracy this time. Really? Um, I, I, I took things uh, fairly head on uh, today, yeah. which was fun. Uh, um, if if uh, the uh, less XP uh, lucrative way of doing things. Um, uh, I think we definitely saw, um, you know, we definitely saw uh, the widow standing up for her community um, uh, and, you know, putting herself on the line, which I think is a big part of her uh, her drive. So I definitely think one for that. Yeah. Um, again, no- nothing from vice or trauma this time. I will say, like- um, you did, uh, I think uh, you, you expressed your background a bit. You, another, we added another uh, one of your girls. Uh, that is true. Music. That is true. Um, and um, yeah, in terms of learning something about the widow. Yeah, I think one of the things we definitely learned this time, and uh, there, there have been hints of it before, is that for, for all the, the protectiveness um, and stuff she has, 
uh, over over the girls. She's also fairly permissive when it comes to them. You know, she's 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 happy to let them make their own their own mistakes or choices. No, you know, not even mistakes necessarily. Um, but you know, she's just always there to pick things up if they do go wrong. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's another XP. So I think that's cool. Really Thank you. Yeah, place it wherever. Yeah, like Band of Blades, you get 5 million XP from just one mission. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit more pulling teeth. Uh, and last but not least, uh, for Amrani, um, did you address a challenge okay. with deception or influence? Well, if, uh, if disguise counts as deception. Yeah. I would yeah, say, like, also the gathering info. Um, yeah. Because... I yeah, I disguise. I uh, use disguise with gathering info, and then uh, with uh, positioning myself on, on the. Okay, so that's two, yeah. Yep. And uh, did I express my beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I, I think I did in terms of uh, trying to do the good, the good thing, yeah, to do good. Yeah, uh, both with uh, Bazo and with the Twilight Patrol. Yeah. So it's two more XPs. Okay. And Great. yeah, I don't think it's probably issues for advice. No, no, I didn't. No. Uh, so, what did we learn besides everything about Amrani? <laughs> yes, everything. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I'm thinking uh, Amrani learned that uh, I don't know if this counts, but she was being, I was being during the whole session very honest and not lying, which is uh, uh, really unusual for a slide. I was totally honest with uh, with the the, the the midnight patrol and uh, in the beginning and also in the end. So it was, uh, you know, maybe she found out that 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 can also work sometimes. Yeah, I think I need to speak for that. Um, that's five okay. overall. Um, five, thanks. Hell yeah. So uh, the last thing is crew XP, and then we'll finish up. Um, okay, so. At the end of each session, for each item below, mark one XP, or instead mark two XP if that item occurred multiple times. Did you interfere with criminal scores, protect citizens, or antagonize the law? I think you kind of did the first two at the same time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that's two. That'd be terribly nice. Um, did you contend with challenges above your current station? Level two gang, yo. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I think you only did that the one time, so that's one XP. Uh, but you filled up. Did you bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one? Your reputation is ostentatious. <laughs> I think two people landing, uh, one of them on the hull, um, and also... Yeah, fit, fit, fist fighting hulks in the street feels ostentatious to me. Also, uh, you were in a hammock underneath the bridge, Magpie. Um, also, the widow Pendrin. Also, there was a clown that kind of like just stumbled in, and it kind of helped uh, take down the whole. Yeah, that's two XP. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, there. And uh, did you uh, express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or sense of nature of the group? I think absolutely. I think we saw that a lot, definitely in terms of like helping the community, uh, trusting Amrani, and bringing her in to the fold. That's another two, I'd say. Uh, hell yeah. So, all right. I'm going to stop recording, but I always want to say thank you very much for uh, playing. That was that was a lot of fun. Uh, these characters are great. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for jumping in. I hope. Yeah, hope thank you, you so much it. for accepting me the way you did. It was really, really, really great. A great game for me. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll do great start. Fun. Yeah. So I'm going to stop this recording then. I just want to make sure that, like, you know, there's some great players here. If you're wa anyone who's watching this made it to the end. Uh, links are below. See if you want to get involved because very cool people here. But yeah, I'm going to stop recording. Uh, goodbye, YouTube.